Thanks a lot, Joe. Welcome, everyone, to ESPN College Football, presented by Geico under the lights here at Memorial Stadium. It's Cal hosting Washington. Washington ranked number five, undefeated at 8-0 coming into the ball game. Let's take a look at the college football playoff rankings. They were revealed on Tuesday for the first time this year. Alabama, Clemson, Michigan, one, two, three. And then eyebrows raised collectively at number four with Texas A&M. Then some of the headlines this week resonating from coast to coast all the way up to the Northwest. The Huskies snubbed, shocked, and feeling a lot of different ways until just hours ago. Texas A&M upset at Mississippi State. So this is where things take an interesting turn in the world of college football. And we've only just begun. Mark Jones alongside Rod Gilmore. Quinn Kesnick down on the field joining us in just a bit. Just days after they felt Washington busted, disgusted, bamboozled, and not to be trusted, <laughs> they get an opportunity here today with Texas A&M losing. What does it mean for Washington? Well, whether the committee got it wrong or the Pac-12 was dissed, the reality is that A&M lost, and, our, and now Washington has an opportunity to be dominant and show that even though they've had a weak schedule, they've overcome it. And they get a Cal team tonight that has knocked off a couple of ranked teams. It would be a good win and should propel them mm -hmm. to number four if they are impressive with style points. Coach Dykes' team coming off a loss last week against USC back home in their comfortable confines. Rod, we've got a couple of the top offenses in the country. Their quarterbacks are some great catalysts. But Hansen is back in action Quinn, that's big news for Cal, right? Yeah, Chad Hansen just warming up uh, off to my left right here. Uh, happy days for Cal because he has got 59 receptions this year, eight touchdowns in only six games. He hurt his ankle against Oregon State. They had a bye week. He's missed the last two games. Now, watching him warm up, I got to say, he's not 100%. The coaching staff, he even admitted this week that he was wincing during practice. His ability to cut, his ability to accelerate and push off that left ankle is in question. Offensive coordinator Jake Spavital said they're going to give it a shot. They hope the adrenaline kicks in and that he can run uh, with 100%. But, but I think they have low expectations uh, about what he'll be able to give them. Well, he's certainly a key cog offensively for the Bears. Cal winning the toss they decide to receive so the Huskies will kick off Trey Watson and Kalfani Muhammad gonna be back deep that's Muhammad right there for the Bears Bears at four and four overall in the season needing a couple more wins to become bowl eligible Short kick down to the 16 to Watson. And Watson pushed out of bounds to the 24-yard line. Where it'll be first down and 10 for Davis Webb, the grad transfer quarterback out of Texas Tech. Last week he was 34-53 passing in their loss. And there's a look at the particulars on him. A tall, strong-armed quarterback and ranking near the top in several categories in the nation. He's been up to the task in terms of a home game against ranked teams, knocking off Utah and Texas. He threw eight touchdown passes in those two games. That's the pass on first down. The pass is almost intercepted at the 45-yard line. Tipped by Buda Baker. Baker, one of the leaders in the secondary and overall defensively for Washington. It'll be second down and 10. Davis Fair. Webb, the... Uh, Leader of this offense, who was voted captain just three weeks into the season. Well, he can throw the deep ball. The question is, will he have Hanson tonight to catch it on the other end? Set up the screen. Hanson gets his first catch. Didn't really have a chance to get out into the open field, the area. With the tackle on the play. Quint talked about Hanson a moment ago. 59 catches on the season. Picked up about two yards on the play. Uh, he's facing a very good secondary, perhaps perhaps the best in college football. We're talking about Sidney Jones, number 26 right there, lined up against Chad Hansen. That's going to go against the Huskies. 
Huskies undefeated at 8 0 coming in, Rob. Uh, Chris Peterson certainly has a lot of confidence in his defense, his secondary, and you heard Quint talk about Hanson and that ankle. Well, Jones is a guy who you need to be 100%. And even then, you're at a disadvantage. He is as good as any corner in college football. They haven't thrown a lot his way this year. Webb goes into traffic and is intercepted. Oh, now he said it's dropped by yeah. King. Yeah. Boy, it looked like he had it. Well, you got to come down with it and, yep. and control once you leave your feet. And King, he's the other really good corner on the other side. Now, you come down, you have to have control all the way through. That ah. looked like he had it. But you, you have to complete it, you know? And so that... In that look there, I mean, you really have to be like the outfielder in baseball that makes a catch and shows the ball to the official. Good punt by Dylan Clump. This is Pettis all the way back at the 17, and he gets tripped up by the turf monster. Back at the 13-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 after that 54-yard punt. For Jake Browning, who was 12 of 20 last week, not spectacular stats in that win, but a pivotal win nonetheless against Utah. His numbers nationwide, pretty spectacular. Number two in the FBS in pass efficiency, third in touchdown passes. Well, it's November. It's Heisman time. And his numbers last week in their biggest game of the year did, did not convince a lot of Heisman voters. Mm. So a performance tonight would help in that, in that Heisman race. First and ten for the Huskies on their first possession of the game. Gaskin gets met right in the hole, right at the line of scrimmage. Miles Gaskin got his world rocked. Coming up from the safety spot, Vanderbilt, along with Walker. Loss of two on the play. You know, you, you mentioned Washington at number five. Did you feel like uh, the committee totally disrespected Washington and the Pac-12? I don't think they did. When you look at their strength of schedule, that has been the discussion since Tuesday night. Avon Coleman in the backfield now. They fake the jet sweep, and Browning had it knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Cameron Saffle. It'll be third and long in a blink. Yeah, this is a defense that really has struggled this season. They, they're they coming out really tough now, playing with emotion, getting the ball knocked up in the air there. So it's a good start for the Cal defense. Back to your point, when you have a weak non-conference schedule, the committee has been clear about that the last couple of years. They will penalize you if you haven't challenged yourself outside of the conference. And that's where Washington is right now. A lot at stake for the Huskies. You look at Rutgers, Idaho, and Portland. That doesn't say a lot about your non-conference schedule. Pettis with the catch out near the 18-yard line, but short of the first down. And fourth down coming up for the number five Huskies who have a great opportunity here tonight in Berkeley. Texas A&M lost earlier today against Mississippi State. But then again, Rob, there are a bunch of teams right in that same neighborhood with Washington at 6, 7, and 8, Ohio State. We, Auburn. Will, we will talk about that. <laughs> it's not a slam dunk that Washington moves to number four if they win tonight. This Kano shanks it. And this is going to give Cal fantastic field position at the 36-yard line. A 17-yard punt. The Bears looking golden when we come back. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by the Timberland Pro Gridworks Boot with anti-fatigue technology. When your feet hurt, your work suffers. And Best Buy. Holiday gifting made easy. Davis Webb back to pass on first down, incomplete. And it'll be second down. Cal trying to take advantage of that 17-yard punt, Rod. A great opportunity for them. Well, if you're an underdog and you're playing the top team in your conference, you have to steal possessions. And that 17-yard punt is a stolen possession. Great opportunity for Cal, but they have to take advantage of it. Malik McMorris in the ball game, the lead blocker for Muhammad. Great burst over the left side. And close to a first down, Kalfani Muhammad made a nice move on the area. Well, he did a nice job coming to the left, getting a little help from Malik McMorris, number 99, the big tight end fullback, 310 pounds. On third and one. And this time he's going to be stoned short of the first down. 
setting up a fourth and one, Azeem Victor, one of those talented linebackers. Well, you think they'll go? Yes. I mean, don't they? <laughs> they usually do. They do it a lot. Yep. Instead, they uh, send in their field goal kicker, Matt Anderson. They're going to take the points. Yeah. See, see how often they've gone yeah. for it on fourth down. But remember, we've talked about getting points off turnovers. Right. That kick was a turnover. You want points. From 43 yards out. And he splits the uprights. The Bears take advantage of the 16-yard punt. And strike first here in Berkeley. Back after this. Welcome to the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. And welcome back, everyone, to Berkeley, California, Memorial Stadium. Number five, Washington trailing 3-0 after a 17-yard shanked punt, drawing the ire of head coach Chris Peterson in his third year. Going undefeated so far at 8-0, 5-0 in conference play. We've had a couple of close calls this year. One at Arizona and one last week against Utah. I think, able to survive. I think Washington is a little, is a little bit ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. This is a really young team. And I think a lot of us thought next year would be the year they could be a juggernaut. Mm -hmm. There ain't no. Yeah, what about that uh, team up the way in Pullman, too? And undefeated this year, Washington State. With an impressive win as well. Ah, the home of the Pirates. <laughs> Joiner and Ross back deep. Ross, a dangerous kickoff return man. As we go back to Adnan Burke in the studio. All right, Jonesy, thank you very much. We'll have to you on Bama and LSU. First game in college football this year that was scoreless through three quarters of play. Finally, we have a touchdown. That would be Jalen Hurts scampering his way in the end zone for Alabama, up 7 0 in Baton Rouge, under 10 to go. Jonesy? All right, Adnan. Stay tuned. Pac-12 after dark out here on the West Coast. A lot of uh, interesting happenings throughout the years. Some wild frenetic finishes. First down and 10 for Washington. Miles Gaskin in the backfield beside Browning. Browning throws to nobody in particular. Ross, the intended receiver. And it'll be second down and 10. Jake Browning completing 68% of his passes on the season a guy that was recruited by head coach Chris Peterson when Peterson was still the head coach at Boise State attended some of Peterson's camps at Boise State well this is a homecoming I mean he's from about uh, 75 minutes up the road near Stockton he's got some family and friends here tonight in traffic Rob <laughs> <laughs> Nice handoff to Gaskin on the move, and he's going to set up a third and five. I know you're my you're my Google Maps guy in this part of the if country. There's always traffic here in the Bay Area. <laughs> Come on, what are you talking about? You got to hit me up on those side streets and get me uh, get me out of traffic and harm's way, just like Gaskin tried to do on that last play. Third and five coming up for the Huskies. They went three and out on their first possession. Well, Cal has not been a very aggressive third down blitzing team they tend to be a little bit dropped seven or eight into coverage but they're weak on the back end they've had a lot of injuries a lot of backup players maybe they'll be a little bit more aggressive tonight third and five Browning has to scramble a lot of room in front of him and he'll pick up the first down tiptoeing out of the 39 so the sophomore quarterback out of Folsom California showing a little bit of ability to escape right there. He's decisive. He doesn't waste a lot of time. He processes the information on the field very quickly. And the great quarterbacks do. They figure out what they need to do, whether it's throw it or pass it. He sizes up the situation quickly and becomes decisive. And he picks up the first down there. Ten yard run for him. Devon Coleman in the backfield. Huskies with the number one offense in the conference and it looked like timeout John Ross and Washington Browning, that's and their some of those first. receivers weren't on the same page a perplexed look etched across the countenance of Ross Browning and Peterson here well this is a slow start for the Huskies I mean a little confusion usually they confuse the defense with their formations 
and their motion right now they're confusing themselves and they had a bad special teams play mm. the 17 yard punt this is a very slow start for them and that's not what you've come to expect from you know coach pete's type of team they are usually crisp and good at the start of a game a little bit of a slow start tonight rod they they kind of look like a 3 a.m shift at the waffle house <laughs> on that last possession Waffle House, huh? <laughs> you ever been there that early or late? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all, my friend. A lot of action, nothing efficient going on. First and ten, rearing back, Browning has a man. Ross, touchdown Huskies. That's how you come back. Well, that'll wipe out a slow start. When you have a guy on the outside, that runs under 4-3. You better give him some room and turn your hips and go. And that's too late, my friend. That is way too late. That is just pure speed. And there are a number of scouts and NFL executives here watching some of these Husky players, and he is certainly one of them. That wasn't exactly a great pass by Browning. It was almost underthrown, it looked hey, like. When he gives you, when Ross gives you that much cushion, you just get it out there and let him go find it. <laughs> he run, ran right by the corner. He's completely wide open. That was uh, Vanderbilt, number seven, trying to play with him, who's normally playing this, the uh, safety spot, a little bit outside with Ross there. Not even close. That is such a mismatch. That's a 12th touchdown catch of the season. He came in as the leader in the country, or co-leader. Four, two, nine, and the 40. You're track, man. That's moving. That's, yeah, that's about a 10-4, 100 as... Uh, you look at what the Huskies have done in the first quarter, outscoring their opponents. They come out of the locker room with bad intentions and have been doing so all season. They went from a hot mess to a 7-3 lead in a blink. Yeah, and, and, and Cal has issues on the back end. They've lost seven safeties this season to injury. They lost Darius Allensworth before tonight's game. He's not starting at corner. They lost a backup corner. I mean, they're so thin in the secondary, there's no surprise that Washington went after that secondary. There's no uh, flattering way to put it. This is one of the more porous defenses in the back 12 in Cal. Robertson on the return. Robertson out to the 24-yard line. Well, kick off your Week 9 NFL Sunday. Right here on ESPN, 10 a.m. Eastern, NFL Insider Sunday Edition. All the news and fantasy updates, then at 11 and Sunday NFL Countdown. Both shows also streaming live on the app and watch ESPN. Watch this one-on-one -on -one situation. He just really abuses Vanderbilt. You get a safety on Ross. Bad news. Now he had to wait on that ball, too. That pass incomplete intended for Hansen. Broken up nicely on the play by Sidney Jones, a DB we were talking about a moment ago. They haven't thrown his way a lot. That time equal to the pass. Second and ten. Trey Watson in the backfield. First down out to the 37-yard line. Ray Hudson, big target at 6-3, working against Buda Baker. If you're, Picks going, up 12. if you're going to pull the upset, you have to be aggressive. You have to match. Cal can't be passive on this drive, or this game could get away from him. Nice run between the tackles. And another first down, this time Trey Watson. This Cal run game is much improved from the start of the year when we saw them run. Well, if you watch Washington, they've got their outside guys, their defensive ends and linebackers. They're really wide. So if you can get inside of them, you got a chance to get some yardage. So they tried to run the same play, and this time Watson dragged down. Patoya. Well, you, you can't run outside on this Washington team. They're, they're too fast. But Utah had success running inside inside of the defensive end and just outside of the tackle and that was where that first big run came from for Cal. 
Henning Patoai making the last tackle on the play. Webb with time and no time after. A beat or two too long, and he's sacked by Johnson, Jalen Johnson. Yeah, we'll give the credit to the secondary because this is a coverage sack. Look how long he holds this football. Nowhere to go with it. That's that's the secondary locking down. I keep telling you, this is, in my view, the best secondary in college football. Really? Maybe, maybe Michigan. Really? I know some folks in Southern California like USC's, but, but this secondary, with their corners, they're really, really good. That was the 27th sack of the season for the Huskies on the comeback pattern complete to Demetrius Robertson, the talented freshman, but he's going to be short of the first down. And fourth down coming up for the Bears. So a little clip and save for our audience out there. Rod Gilmore says that Jones and King are the best corners as a tandem in the country. I like them. Okay. I, I, th I think that'll be proven not only this season, but you'll watch them for several years in the NFL. A line drive punt fielded by Dante Pettis, who has five career punt return touchdowns. 38-yard punt, nothing on the return. Browning looking to strike again when we come back. ESPN College Football is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by the 2017 Ford Fusion, the beauty of a well-made choice. Oh, Marshawn just all kind of crunk right here on a Saturday night in the Bay. Almost hit a band member on the card. Welcome, everyone, back to Dr. Pepper's championship drive. Game of the week, Washington number five against Cal. And there's a look at the former Seattle Seahawks, former Cal Bear. It was 10 years ago that he took that magical ride, that spin on the golf cart. Browning under heat, throws it away. Pressure by Cameron Saffel on the play. And Money Lynch, this is what he did after that win back in 2006 against the Huskies. He went out for a little spin. I think he recreated that pretty well. <laughs> he didn't have Mama Lynch with him back then, but he did a nice job with it tonight. Yeah. Didn't have his whip, so he just used the golf cart. Rounding number three the off. <laughs> in the tackle box, and there was no receiver in the... That's going to be a Lots Browning down. penalty against it's Browning. Deep. Uh, what they get him for here, you heard the officials say he wasn't outside the tackle box. And that tackle box extends vertically back through the end zone. Had he been to his right a little bit, he would have been okay. But inside that tackle box, can't that, do it, and there's nobody over there. And now they're saying it's a safety as a result. Because he was in the end zone. Yep. Looked like he was, well, that's close. That's close. I, I, didn't think he was quite in the end zone, but they're going to say that it's a safety. Well, remember, you also have to figure out when the officials blew that. And that doesn't look to me like he was in the end zone. No, no. It looks to me like he threw that well before he got into the end zone. And I don't think they blew the play dead, you know, when he was in the end zone. That's, 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 that looks like that is short of the end zone. I'd like yeah. to see another angle where that football is. I think they're going to take those two points off the board, I would expect. Yeah, from those angles, he's in the field of play and the mm -hmm. ball's in the field of play. Remember, on these reviews, we need indisputable video evidence. We're going to take one more look at it. And, uh... and look, I, from, from my vantage point, I don't even see how the football's in the yeah. end zone man. I think that's pretty clear evidence that he's in the field of play. The ball looks like it's in the field of play. Yeah, it was out of his hands well before he was in the end zone. Usually, Rod, we talked about it before when it takes this long. It appears that most times than not, they reverse it and try and see where the ball should be spotted and how much time to put back on the clock. Yeah, usually you're right, man. When, when this takes this long to look at, I think they've looked at and figured out that he was in the field of play. I think they're looking at it now and, and checking the clock, checking exactly where to spot it. 
because I think that was pretty indisputable that he was in the field of play. Well, seven to five, Washington with the lead. They struck last time they had the ball in a long pass and catch from Browning to Ross. The quarterback was in the field of play when he released the ball. The ball be placed at the one half yard line. It will be second down. It's a loss of down. There's still a foul for intentional grounding. So they're going to take the two points off the board. And put the ball half yard away from the end zone. Well, how aggressive will, will Cal be here? You know, if you're a team that is an underdog, you're thinking, here's a chance to, to create something. But remember, Ross just ran down the field on him. You don't want to open up yourself to a 99-yard yeah. bomb with Ross running by you, although Ross is not out there right now. You can be aggressive. 12 personnel. They run it out of the end zone. Gaskin with a good burst down to the 12-yard line, giving them plenty of space. Tahari Vanderbilt, the safety, making the stop on the play, but again, a 10 for the Huskies. And yeah, this line does a great job of getting to the linebackers, but look, look how deep this handoff is. I mean, he's got to really think in terms of getting up there, but such a great job of hunting down the Cal linebackers, getting them out of the way. Gaskins had plenty of room to run upfield. Third and long, 10 to go. Pettis in motion. Browning with time. And incomplete intended for Ross. That wasn't even close. It'll be fourth down, and they'll have to punt. They're really backed up here, so the Bears should get good field position. Good coverage on the play by Franklin. Well, you were talking earlier about the committee ranking them number five, and, you know, but for the Ross play, you have to say, you know, Washington does not look dominant. I mean, they've had a couple of lackluster possessions, a bad kick, a bad punt on the special teams. Ross bailed him out with a huge touchdown catch just ran by the defense but right now big opportunity but but not dominant a rugby style kick a line drive fielded on the run by Vic Wharton Wharton with the head of steam coming back the other way out of bounds at the 17 yard line and once again the field position game rod tilting in Cal's favor well, right now special teams are killing Washington and both punts were terrible the first one gave Cal a first down at the 35 this one will put them inside the 20. well Monday Night Football matchup features Tyrod Taylor and the Bills taking on Russell Wilson and the Seahawks from Century Link in Seattle 815 on ESPN first and 10 Davis Webb hands it off to Muhammad and Muhammad picks up about three on the play Damon Turpin making the tackle what do you make of this improved Cal running game so far so far so good they've been able to run inside those big defensive tackles Washington has a huge defensive line and we're talking about Paul's number 11 and 99 great games both well north of 300 pounds Webb goes through his progression into the end zone Tipped away by Kevin King. You said play. those corners are good, Rod. And oh, man. Tall, too. It King is 6'3". It is fun to watch them play. Recovery speed, athleticism, ball skills. Watch King find the ball in the air. Knows he can't make the one-handed grab. Knocks it away. These two corners are really, really good. Good battle between Robertson and him there. Third and seven. Hanson not in the ball game. Webb fires. No signal yet, and they're going to say it's incomplete. Intended for Stovall. And once again, King there to defend. Well, Stovall is one of the two freshman receivers who's been playing really well for Cal. He's not the biggest guy at about 5'9". But look at him go down for this. Oh, that ball's batted yeah. away. And that's another good play by King. Back to back. Look at him reach around and knock that away. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you get excited over good oh, DB play like that, Do you know right? how much bad <laughs> DB play you see out there? Yeah. You see two guys on one team playing like this? Well, DB ain't, ain't easy these days with the spread offenses that you see. But uh, King, a little bit of a 
deviation from the norm. Great play to break that up. Fourth and seven down to Quinn. And Sonny Dykes was taking his time right there, hoping to get a, a video review. And I'm surprised that we didn't have a delay a game penalty there. Yeah, he could wait a long time, Quint, and not get the desired result. That hit the turf. From 30 yards out, Anderson completed one, made one from 43 earlier. And hits this one as well. It's a one-point ball game. Back after this. Back at Memorial Stadium under the lights, Mark Jones alongside Rod Gilmore and Quinn Kessenick. Taco Bell is a proud partner of college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passionate fans like these at games all season long. I'm waiting for Quint to get in that section like he did last week. Why, you think he's got uh, taco for you or something? Well, he might have a little surprise. I mean, Quint's a man of many talents. <laughs> some off the field that we, we might even see sometime later. Mm. Call the tease in the business. Okay. There, huh? All right. <laughs> Seven to six here in the first quarter. If you're just joining us, Washington up with their touchdown pass to Ross earlier. And there is a look at one of the best kickoff return men in school history. He has four kickoff return touchdowns in his career. This is Joyner. And Joyner brought down to the 33 yard line, where it'll be first down and 10, down to Quint. This is not a midnight snack. <laughs> this is a sandwich because this is a sandwich game for this Washington team. Go back last week. Gutsy went on the road at Utah. You look ahead. You got USC coming up uh, at home next week. A, a huge game. Well, Cal is the meat and the cheese because this is a sandwich game, and I'm not convinced Washington is ready to play. Mm. Great visual there, Q. Well, he's right. We were talking before about Washington not looking dominant, and maybe there's a little distraction with the sandwich game and with the rankings coming out uh, a few days ago. Best starting field position of the night so far. The pass complete. You know, That's Washington. Dante Pettis with the catch. Washington's been a fast starting team all season long. Not so much tonight. First quarter, seven to six. Cal with a couple of field goals, and Cal's defense has played. Pretty aggressive, pretty courageous so far. Miles Gaskin in the backfield. Cal with the number four scoring offense in the country. Gaskin weaving. Gets to the edge and pushed out of bounds near midfield at the 49 yard line. Gaskin leads the conference in rushing yards. Freshman All American in 2015, a season ago. Set a school record for true freshmen in rush yards. I think he's excited facing a Cal defense that gives up 286 mm. yards rushing per game. Mm. Yeah, they've given up big yardage to several backs this year. That's last in college football. First down and 10 from the 49. They run it into the short side of the field. Gaskin got a nice block. And close to another first down at the 39-yard line. Well, you're going to get a lot more of that and get used to it because it does a couple things. You're, you're running against a defense that has struggled to stop the run, and you keep that high-powered offense on the sideline. And I think you'll see a lot more of that, and then as soon as Cal starts to bring another safety up to deal with the rushing attack, they'll go deep again. This time they empty out the backfield. Gaston splits out to the top of the screen. Look out for the trick play. Here it is. Pettis wide open. Room service. Touchdown. Daniels. Well, the trick play is always in the book. The double pass and Dante Pettis. Son of former major leaguer Gary Pettis shows he can throw a ball too, just like that. <laughs> yeah, he pitched it all right. Darrell Daniels with the catch at the other end, and the Huskies lead it 14 to six. Now 
the five team in the country trying to make a move on Texas A&M who lost earlier folks Tuesday we revealed the latest college football playoff top 25 rankings Reese and the crew breaking them down from top to bottom have coaches reactions as well as new live live interviews with committee chairman Kirby Hokan Tuesday at 7 Eastern on ESPN also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN well, you go back to Coach Peterson's days at Boise State. The hook and ladder, the Statue of Liberty. This guy's got a lot of tools in the trick box. And he pulled out the double pass on that one. Chris Peterson, a California native. Well, this is just a little bit of that whole deal that they used to do at Boise State bring their trick plays Chris Peterson up there and run his before you get a chance to run yours and kind of intimidate you with it and you know he's got a couple more <laughs> yeah you got to stay awake Demetrius Robertson back there awaiting the kickoff Washington uh, perhaps facing the prospect of having to go undefeated and run the table in the Pac-12 all the way through to the championship game to get a spot in the college football playoff. This is Demetrius Robertson out to the 33. Let's go back to the touchdown. What was a key move here? Right? Well, when you're running the ball well, trick plays work. Here's your, your tight end, and here's your safety who's been thinking, oh, last two plays, they mm. ran it and they hurt us. I'm going to come up and get involved. Guess what? A little late. Running right by you. Way late. Going to be first and 10 for Cal from the 32. They get a lot of weapons offensively. The Huskies do. See if this bear raid offense can summon an answer. They hand it off on first down. That's Trey Watson brought down right near the line of scrimmage. He fell forward for a yard. How would you like to be Wuching, number 28, outside linebacker? You know, you're not a not a big guy. You're 230 pounds, and you have to block a 300-pound fullback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Malik McMorris, number 99, leading the way again. Gain of a couple of plays as we go down to Quint for more. Yeah, you're seeing the work uh, of two of their best defensive tackles, Elijah Qualls, 11 and white, 6'1", 321. He's watching this guy warm up. And he was making one-handed catches and running routes. He, he is a three-sport athlete in high school, a great wrestler. And then Greg Gaines, 99 in white, another 320-pounder. These guys are cannonballs. They're run stoppers, but they can get upfield. We uh, saw them on film. They got nimble feet. Hanson back in the ball game for a rare snap, and that pass incomplete. A rare snap, a rare blitz mm. by Washington. And Q was talking about those defensive linemen and. You know, they got a good push inside with a couple of their 300-pounders with Qualls and Gaines, but they brought a couple extra that time. And Washington, with three of those big guys up front, big, heavy 300-pounders light on their feet, and right now they're a problem for Cal. Fourth and nine. Dylan Clump into punt. Keep an eye on Pettis. Got five career punt return touchdowns. Trying to get outside and pushed out of bounds at about the 35 as we go back to Adnan Virk in the studio. Thank you, Jones. It's the Scott Trade takeaway moment. Georgia and Ken Tucker. 25-yard field goal attempt for Rodrigo Blankenship, and he'll hit it as time expires. The Bulldogs snapping a modest two-game losing streak. They win this one 27-24, and it is a final in Death Valley as Alabama's defense Pitching a shutout against LSU, completely shutting down Danny Etling. They're not an O now, Jonesy. Okay, Adnan. First and ten. They set up a screen here. Gaskin met immediately and wrapped up at the 30-yard line. Good stick by Franklin. You know, when you're injury depleted secondary. And you're down 14, yeah, make the tackle, line up, 
<laughs> That's all. <laughs> Just line up. <laughs> I mean, trash talking is fine when you're when you're getting it done, but ooh, ooh, a little early for that one. Yeah, they, ooh. Those guys were looking at John Ross's shoe size bottoms uh -huh. a few plays ago. Second and twelve. And they go deep again, and they got him again. Ross comes back and gets a block. Ross, like a boss, touchdown. What's with the trash talking? That's what you have to be afraid of. That guy right there. Well, Coach uh, had no shot in pursuit here, Rod. Well, he gets a chance to make everybody in that secondary miss. They had two shots at him. Well, Coach uh, actually had two chances to get Ross, and both times Ross ran by him. It, this is just ridiculous. And John, John Ross is like, I'm going to put you on my highlight tape twice. I mean, the first one is pure speed. He just runs by. Wakocha out there, number 16, runs by him and waits for an underthrown ball and then mm. just jukes everybody with change of direction and Wakocha comes after him again, can't get there. Served him twice. Wow. 67 yards and all, and you see some of the pyrotechnics and the capability of this explosive, prol prolific Husky offense. 21 points on the board already. You see... Trash talking is fine when you can back it up, but when all you do is inspire the other guys to drop a bomb on you, you gotta back down a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's good advice, and maybe that's what the coach is hearing now from his coaches on the sideline. And 2.17 to go in the first quarter. Ross with two touchdown receptions already. Former high school track star out of LBC, Long Beach, California. Missed all the last season with an ACL injury and now fumbles the kickoff at the 26 yard line. And they got to be careful here. Let's take one more look at that touchdown, Rod. Well, watch, watch the matchup. The matchup's up here, and there's your safety who will come out of the out of the mix. You've got pretty much single man coverage here. And watch him just run by. You have to know you cannot run with the guy who's 429. You've got to give him a little bit more, more cushion there. And then once he gets that on you, man, the change of direction, all, all the skills are coming out for Ross. Post and 10. Pass complete over the middle to Bug Rivera, number 26 slot receiver, his first catch. Those two big plays by Ross now really change the defense. They can't play the run. They have to be aware of that. Rivera again and picks up and up for the first down. Yeah, they're going to have to make some major adjustments defensively. Which will give Washington a chance to run the football against Cal whenever they want. That's the problem when you give them those big throws. And this is critical for Cal now. They got to they got to keep, keep in contact by getting a score. Webb taking a shot has a man. Robertson answers and he stepped out of bounds they're going to say at the three yard line he got in behind king and it's first and goal 61 yards on the pass and catch and a perfectly thrown ball by webb yeah it looks like he stepped out at about the four that was close and Robertson is the other freshman. We talked about Stovall earlier, but Robertson is coming off his, his best game of the season against USC, in which he had nine catches. And he, you would figure, would be a bigger component of their offense with Chad Hansen hurting in this ballgame. And uh, Coach Dykes is... Irate there on the sidelines, incensed. Perhaps thinking that maybe they need to take a look at this and see if Robertson actually stepped out of bounds. He's mad about something. Well, remember, the call on the field was that he stepped out. 
right. and that was to look right there. I think that's where the official who was right on it felt that he stepped out right there. Yeah, he, and he you got, did. Yeah, white shoe on the white turf. He kicked up some black, you know, the little uh, pebbles, yeah, pebbles the there. Pebbles there. I think that's where why the call was made there by that official who saw it and Sonny Dykes doesn't agree with it but from that angle that looked like a pretty good call from the official on the sideline there. Might be an issue with the uh, the play clock too that ran down. So Jonesy, let, let's go back and, and take a look at that, that play. It was a great throw by Webb. Watch the protection he gets, but King gets beaten on the outside, and Robertson takes that perfectly well, dropped in there, and it was that one step that I don't think Dykes could see from the sideline, or that many of the Cal players on that side could see, but it was the one step, white shoe on that white sideline, kicking up some pebbles. Let's go down to the queue. Yeah, I, I think Coach Dykes is more concerned about the clock and, and whether the play was going to be reviewed. Remember earlier, he ran the 40-second clock all the way down, didn't get a review. Then the officials reset and put 25 on it. That got a reaction out of Chris Peterson and Washington. Their staff was going ballistic. Uh, and once again, here you see Spavadol and Sonny Dykes all the way on the field trying to get some clarity from the officials. I think it's in relation to the clock. Huh. And now it looks like they're actually going to review the last play. Well, if, if this is what the officials are looking at in terms of a review and not looking at the clock right now, you know, that's not going to overturn the call. There's Robertson's step right there. Yeah, and that to me looks out like he's out of bounds. Yeah. And there's no reason why you would overturn that call. Right. First down. All right, let's line them up. Let's go. Play stands. First down and goal for Cal. Now, Jonesy, this is a really good defense up front. They will handle things inside normally. Cal doesn't have big bats. But Webb has been known to run down here. Mm. He's got five rushing touchdowns on the season. First and goal. Muhammad on the handoff and stoned at the line of scrimmage by Vita Vea. Yeah, that, that's a bad matchup. You've got. A running back who's about 175 pounds running off tackle against Vea, who's 330 pounds. Twice of Muhammad. The receiver is out to the bottom of your screen. Trey Watson, the lone back behind Webb. Under a minute to go in the first quarter. And Watson's going to be stopped up by Vea again. It'll be third and goal. That defense, stout, impenetrable in the middle. Well, Jonesy, neither one of those backs are big backs. They're not goal line backs. Watson is also a smaller back. Red. Slings it in a great bat down, broken up nicely by Taylor Rapp. He laid out and knocked it down. It'll be fourth and goal as we near down on the end of the quarter. Look at this. Yeah, Rapp has really helped that defense. Freshman safety, his emergence has really helped them. And now Cal will go. In. I, I agree with this. You, you can't like keep ball? kicking field goals. You're an underdog. You've settled for two field goals. You need, you need a touchdown. Play clock at three. Got to go. Webb going to take it himself. Touchdown. <laughs> A 
great harbinger of hope perhaps moving forward in the second quarter. That makes so much sense. I don't know why they didn't do it on first down. I mean, you know, your, your backs are so small down there, and, and Webb has shown this season he can run in that red zone. Right. It's an eight-point ball game. Davis Webb, the grad transfer from Texas Tech, taking out his do-it-yourself kit. The Bears with a touchdown. Back for the second after this. And welcome back, everyone, to Dr. Pepper's Championship Drive Game of the Week. Under the lights at Memorial Stadium, I'm Mark Jones alongside Rod Gilmore, chopping it up with Quint Kessenick down on the sidelines and Davis Webb, quarterback for Cal, with a pivotal but albeit early touchdown to keep them in contact with Washington, right? Yeah, Rod? It, it's a one possession game right now, and Cal got a big play, so a lot of confidence should be back on the Cal side. Here. This one will come out to the 25. Kick off your Week 9 Sunday NFL on ESPN, 10 a.m. Eastern. NFL Insider Sunday Edition with the gang. And then at 11 and Sunday NFL Countdown. Right up to kickoff. Both shows streaming live on the app and watch ESPN. Big weekend of football in the Bay Area. Broncos in town to take on the Raiders tomorrow. This game, Stanford and Oregon State played early today. A lot, a lot of football in the Bay Area. Yes, sir. Well, Browning back on the field, and they have scored some points here in the first quarter. Now moving into the second. Keep your eye on that guy if you're Cal. Got to find him. He's killing you. That's Ross. They hand it off. That's Chico McClatcher. Lines up at receiver usually four yard gain and uh, that guy played a little football at Stanford back yeah. in the day. He was pretty good. Yeah, he's done. Okay <laughs> down on the field before the game. We caught up with John and he's in town to catch his Broncos against the Raiders tomorrow in a big game tied atop the AFC West at six and two and he took in the Stanford game earlier today. Big football weekend for my old teammate. Second and six. Gaskin over the left side of the line. You know what I remember. Those old Raider Bronco games, man. Marv Hubbard and Stabler and in the black hole over there. Yeah, yeah. buddy, that yeah. was that was football. Look, you know, John John played in a bunch of those games yeah. where uh, they tried to <laughs> they tried to kill him, take him out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make sure he didn't come back for a few weeks. Yeah. Let's look at John Ross, the prolific wideout for Washington. A couple of touchdown receptions already. Third and two. 127 yards on two catches and two TDs. You think he's not going to get some attention here? Mm. Pettis sets after going in motion. Gaston on the handoff picks up the first down. Remember, folks, three-yard gain. Washington with an opportunity coming into this ball game. If you're just joining us, Texas A&M, the number four team in the college football playoff, lost at Mississippi State. Chris Peterson's team, number five in the rankings. And if you win here today, how much does it do? Because their strength of schedule doesn't really change. As Lee Corso would say, not so fast, my friend. <laughs> not so fast. We'll pick that up after the play here, first and ten. Browning on the slant, thrown behind his receiver, Aaron Fuller. What do you make of it if they win here today? Well, well how much do they move? The committee all? was concerned about the non-conference schedule and that AM had a more challenging schedule. You know who else has a more challenging schedule right now than Washington? Tell me. Ohio State mm -hmm. with one loss, just like AM. So I would not be surprised if next week on Tuesday, Ohio State jumped Washington, assuming Washington wins right. tonight. That they would jump them and be at number four would not surprise me one bit. Second and ten. Browning, a nice move and a slide about three yards short of the first down. Picked up five. Let's look back at that non-conference schedule while we're talking about Washington. Rutgers back on September 3rd. Yep. Idaho, September 10th. Portland State, September 17th. Uh, you know, people yeah, look, look at that. Look, look yeah. at that record. 
and the committee has been clear. You need to step it up and challenge yourself non-conference. And Washington is going to do that in 2018 when they, they face Auburn. But right now, that non-conference schedule is a little bit of an anchor on the Huskies. Third and five to hold on to the football here. Suddenly just an eight-point ball game. Browning with plenty of time. Gonna try and do it himself and comes up short by a yard. So the Bears defense holds. Good tackle by Davison and Devontae Downs. That was a really good tackle. Hey Rod, back to the schedule. Is it worth if you're Coach Peterson and the athletic director maybe trying to get out of a game and get a stronger opponent? Yeah. to make things line up better? I, I think that's what they've done for 2018. But I think coming into this season and last season with Chris Peterson taking over, they wanted it a little mm. soft while they were young and, and growing. There's Kano. Rolls it inside the 20. It's going to be down at about the 19. Boy, that was an old okie doke pushing the cow player into the ball <laughs> trying to cause a fumble <laughs> did you see the officials laughing no 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 we're not going to fall for that banana and the tailpipe no. thing again no no not falling for it eight point ball game cal down by eight and a shot in the national championship trophy presented by dr pepper right here tonight in berkeley california that's what they're playing for rod i saw you hanging around that thing did trying to get, get a selfie with it huh yeah. Can you shine get, it up a little bit there? Yeah. Try and sneak that bad boy uh, into the overhead. Get it past TSA at the airport. Out of the backfield, Trey Watson with the catch met immediately. Had to gain a yard on the play. Second down coming up, and one of the questions in this game is how effective will Chad Hansen be? Yeah, there, there he is. He's matched up against Sidney Jones. Really star corner out there. Pass complete for the first down at Stobel as we go to Q. Yeah, Hanson's got uh, four targets, only one reception. We were here earlier this year when they played Texas and he had the two touchdowns in the monstrous game. He is nowhere near uh, his cutting ability. They're coming off that ankle injury, Oregon State. It's been three weeks since, but his ability to stop, go, and change directions just isn't there. Uh, he's mainly being used as a decoy in this ball game. Yeah, and, and Q, you're right, and and I think you're seeing more work to the slots the against the safety. The ruling on the field. So guys is like Bud Rivera, number 26, and Stovall in the slot. That, that's where Webb is looking more. He's trying to get away from the corners a little bit and work the safeties as we're taking a look at that play again. Wow. Yeah, and when you think about it, Rod, you know, the strength of Washington's defense are their corners. And, and, and so if you're going to attack them, it's going to be in the slots and the tight windows. And, and, and that's what Davis Webb has got to prove tonight, that he can throw the ball in tight windows. I think they're looking at the spot as to where he came down. Looks like that's at about the 29, just beyond our yellow marker. Right. And keep in mind that marker, that line on your screen is fairly accurate, but still a little bit of an approximation. Not the official yeah. mark, but I think you could see from that he he caught that with his knees at about the 30, but the ball was at about the 29. You know, that, back to Quint's point. You want to work the safeties. The problem is one of those safeties mm. is Buda Baker. I mean, they've moved him into that nickel spot where he's playing that slot corner, so he's covering that that slot receiver. Right. So you're seeing Davis Webb look more to the other side because that guy right there, he, he's been a star player in this year, this league for for three years now. Well, he's uh, the leader back there in the secondary. Makes a lot of the calls. Extremely competitive. Reminds me of the, the Honey Badger. Oh, how about Matthew, huh? Yeah, a okay. little bit, little bit undersized, but strong, tough, good change of direction, a very sure tackler. You know, people wondered about whether the Honey Badger could play in the NFL, and he's made it clear he can. Yeah. And more and more teams at that that level are looking for guys who can play man-to-man -man coverage against a slot receiver. After review, the runner made the line to gain. It'll be first and ten 
Timer, please reset the game clock to 11 minutes and 18 seconds. First and 10 for the Bears. Yeah, th th this is the area where they would want to work. Not, not the other side where Buda Baker is. That's the area where they would want to work. They go up top. Hanson got behind Jones. Wow. wow. Didn't expect that with him at less than 100%. So much for that bad ankle. Huh. And look who he beats. He beats Sidney Jones. And that straight ahead speed, he runs by him. I, that's as stunning as anything mm. we've seen tonight because Hansen did not show that he could move like that on that ankle. 38-yard pickup on the play. First and 10 at the 33. Webb, a long out. Boy, that's a tough throw. That's a pro throw, Rod. Robertson with the catch, working against King. You know, John Elway's down on that sideline. <laughs> he saw that throw. He said, yep, yep, that, that's when you got to make in the lead. Nine yard pickup. They run it inside. Muhammad stopped up. Right near the line of scrimmage. You know, Hansen's story is an interesting one. He was a player at Idaho State, played his freshman year there, decided to transfer to Juco, and then put out an email blast with a bunch of his highlights on it a couple of years ago. Sent his tape to Mountain West Conference teams, Pac 12 teams. A bunch of them passed, but. The staff here at Cal was intrigued. And that intrigue paid off in a scholarship for Hansen last year. Actually, just this past fall, he was put on scholarship. And that's going to be a first down on the run by Trey Watson. And boy, what a key piece he's become, Rob. Yeah, and, and I like this formation for Cal, this two by two. That gives Webb an option looking at the slot formation. Throws the out, complete. Number 17, Wharton. And the Bears moving the ball, an eight-yard gain. Under 10 minutes to go in the first half. Kind of what we expected, huh? Cal going quick against one of the top defenses in the country. Washington, number seven in the country in scoring defense. Webb keeps it himself. There's a flag down on the far side of the field, though. Outside, defense number 29, five yard penalty, yardage results in a first down. That's going to go against Peterson's Huskies. Pack 12 after dark. Weird things happen. Mm -hmm. First and goal from the nine. And the 310 pound Malik McMorris lining up in the backfield. Boy, we have seen a very disjointed start. first Offense, half. Number 19, five-yard penalty, remains first down. That's against Brandon Singleton of the Bears. Now is undefeated at home this year, 4-0. You know, with Nick Morris in there, they kind of even the score in terms of how many 300-pounders <laughs> you can have out there. Yeah. You can run behind him. Yeah, that field is a little tilted. Webb into the end zone. Touchdown, Hanson! Well, Hanson got right and healthy on that drive. Two big catches, Rod. Well, great play action, and you see the safeties and the linebackers fight on that play action. They come up to defend the run, and Webb very quickly raises up and fires over them with Hanson slamming inside. Eight plays, 81 yards. And just when it seemed like the Bears were going to get blown out, they come back with a couple of touchdowns. Hanson, their top receiver, getting healthy, getting right. We got a game. ESPN College Football is presented by Geico. 
15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. And some talented and skilled quarterbacks come through the doors here in Berkeley. Greg Morton of the Dallas Cowboys back in the day. Markowski, Campbell, Baller, Rogers, and Jared Goff, first pick in the draft. And Davis Webb putting up great numbers this year for the Bears as well. You know who wasn't on that list? Tell me. Joe Roth. Might have been the best ever, but sadly passed away of cancer following his junior season at Cal. And boy, was he talented. They play a Joe Roth memorial game every other year here when Cal plays USC. Nine minutes to go in a high scoring first half. Austin Joyner on the return. Out to the 24. Let's go back to the touchdown and watch the play by Hanson. Great quarterbacks and great quarterback ball handling. This is a three deep coverage. You will see. But watch what happens because of the way Webb does the play action. These linebackers jump up. Now you've got your guy wide open behind them and in front of that three deep coverage. Easy pickings. Webb did a really nice job with that play action. Uh, fake there and a great catch on the other end by Hanson. And Hanson, what ankle. <laughs> And he looked good on that last drop. He was that last drop. Devon Coleman in the backfield. Washington leading by a tenuous point. Coleman picks up about four, tackled by Wilson. Levon Coleman, a 5'11 junior out of California. Out of the same high school as Napoleon Kaufman as we look at the number of pass yards given up by the Huskies today already more than their season average. Uh, I, I think they knew this offense would be a challenge and has the ability to explode on them and they sort of have already 20 points 177 yards and mostly handsome. Second and six are handed off to Coleman again stopped up for a gain of just a yard. Talked about Coleman being from the same high school as Napoleon Kaufman, former great at Huskies. They've had some really good running backs uh, back in the day. You played against some, Rod. Yeah, they've had. You brought down a bunch, Rod. Or got run over by a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is kind of a momentum swinging third down mm. here. Right. If Cal's defense can can raise their level and get a stop here, this crowd will really get into it. Clatcher in motion to the top of your screen. Down the seam, complete. That's Pettis on the catch. And a clutch play out near midfield at the 45. A gain of 16 by Dante Pettis. Such an improved receiver from a season ago. Well, he's, he's talented. Punt return specialist, really good hands. Good compliment to Ross on the other side of the field. Gaskin back in the ball game in the backfield. A couple of fakes. And underneath the tight end Drew Sample with another first down clipped out of bounds at about the 23 by Vanderbilt. But they move the chains again. Great decision by Browning here. All this play action. He wants Ross deep. But look at the double coverage on Ross. So he comes off and comes underneath to find sample that's that's a good smart decision because this is where he wanted to go he wanted ross but everybody's going over where <laughs> ross is he, he literally had the bear secondary tripping over themselves after what he's done with him tonight no doubt 32 yard gain coleman back in the ball game at tailback over the middle caught mcclatcher with another first down inside the 10 first and goal Boy, that is a porous back end defensively for Cal. 17-yard game. Well, they're playing with a number of guys who have earned their stripes this season. A lot of injuries, not just at the safety spot, but at the corner spot. Levon Coleman in the backfield. Set deep play action. And the catch. 
Ross. Touchdown is third of the night. Now Ross is demonstrating all his skills. You've seen him run by people. Now he runs a great route, change of direction, and shows you his ability to get down low and cradle that ball, keep it off the ground. Look at that. Hey, he is putting on a show tonight. Learned a lot of the subtleties of the position while he rehabbed from that ACL injury that he suffered last year and came back this year, he says, as a much more determined and polished receiver. And Rod, he's really showing those skills here tonight. Yeah, his quarterback is certainly putting the ball where he needs to. He led him to that inside down low reception. That was nice. A career high third touchdown of the night. John Ross working Cal like a part time job. Pac 12 at the dog. After months of campaigning, November is finally here. Every week, every game, every vote counts. From around the nation, they hail, all promising to make the postseason great again. See who rocked the vote for the college football playoff. John Ross of the Huskies, three touchdowns is lit tonight, folks. Big touchdown catch a moment ago, giving Washington a 28-20 lead. Undefeated 8-0 coming in, 5-0 in conference play. And number five in the college football playoff rankings. Hudson on the return. Brought down at the 26. Let's meet John Ross. I'm John Ross. And he plays really, really well and runs really, really fast. That's the <laughs> second of his three touchdown catches two in the first quarter this one in the third quarter he shows you his skills of going down keeping that ball from hitting the ground he has great hands fantastic speed great body control three receptions for 133 yards tonight and three touchdowns catch made by Hanson that time working against Sidney Jones Always nice to see a guy come back from a major knee injury the way Ross has. He, he's done more than come back. Yeah. He's faster. He's yeah. better. Second and seven. Come on the field and incomplete. Tried to find Hanson. You see when Hanson pulled up there, he was favoring that ankle. Working against Sidney Jones. He'll get the next play off. Well, the third and seven. The good news for Cal is that Hanson is, is back. They've, they've found him. They're able to use him. Robertson, the next best receiver out there. Play clock at 10. Blitz coming. Webb just got it off in time, but it was short because he took a hit. And he felt that one. Pressure coming from Potoai. Well, Washington hasn't been able to get to Webb, so they brought a blitz this time. And there you see. Poto Ai was able to get to him and lay it and lit him up <laughs> with a big hit. Yeah, that uh, Washington front seven is pretty good. Directional punting here is critical for Cal to the numbers or outside. Let's see what they do here, Clint. Pettis back there calls for the fair catch of the 25. Pettis had a touchdown on a punt return last week. And that seven point win against Utah, 44 yards on the punt, nothing on the return, and uh, Webb uh, reaching for his ribs a little bit. That's got to hurt. And welcome back, everyone, to ESPN College Football, presented by Geico, number five, Washington. Looking to move to 9 0 on the season and perhaps crack that. Top four, the first four spots in the college football playoff right now on the fringe at number five. As the polls came out for the first time, the standing came out for the first time on Tuesday. Browning going up top. 
Incomplete for even Ross couldn't get that one. Well, he, he is now <laughs> nine of 14 with three touchdown passes. Jake Browning is, you know, he's a cat. He's a guy, that, guy that's in Cal's own backyard coming out of high school. But the rumor on the recruiting 12 was that Cal wasn't big on him because they didn't think he was tall enough. Really, six two. Well, but uh, you know, you would think that. Given that he was nearby and played for a former Cal quarterback, that Cal could have wrapped him up had they had they wanted it. Gaskin getting a good block downfield from Pettis. And a flag thrown on the play as Pettis is pushed out of bounds at the 47-yard line. This may come back though. Caleb McGreary. Back there by the sight of the flag. Holding offense number 58 10 yard penalty main second down it's Caleb McGarry the right tackle Washington generally has been able to run when they wanted to the mix of the rushing attack with John Ross getting deep behind people keeps Washington from getting an extra keeps Cal from getting an extra man down in the box because of the threat of what John Ross can do to you. Well, they're a pretty balanced offense, this Husky team. Second and 16. Downing. Ross with the catch. And across midfield to the 49-yard line. First and 10. Here's the problem. You, you have to double him. They need to have somebody out there who's at least trying to redirect him and get a hit on him to slow him down. As you let him run free like that, he, he is crushing this Cal secondary. Look at those numbers already. So look, look, at the, look at the cushion you give him, but he gets to run free like that. You've got to find a way to double him, and that means that Washington will go away and run it against you. First and 10, the jet sweep to McClatcher. Nice cutback. And brought down inside field goal range at the 25, but... The way the Huskies are moving the football, they're not thinking about a field goal, that's for sure. And they're not worrying about the clock. I mean, they're getting chunks right now. And again, because of Ross, Cal gets overly concerned about dealing with him and dealing with the pass, and then they come back with rushing plays. They get to the edge. They run inside. First and ten, under four minutes to go. Ross lining up to the top of your screen. Coleman in the backfield. It's to Ross and underthrown incomplete. Did you see before the play? He basically turned to Browning and said, hey, hey, throw it over here. <laughs> They're so far off of me. Throw me the ball. <laughs> that wasn't a complicated hand signal no. or anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're starting to get into a groove. He, he's basically saying, I, I know when I'm singled up, just look my way. Former high school track star. Long Beach, California. 12, pardon me, 11 touchdown tackles coming into the game. That's 14 now. There's Gaskin with nowhere to go. Stopped up right near the line of scrimmage by James Looney. When you're trying to cover somebody that much faster than you, like John Ross has, uh, you, you talked about what double teaming him bracket. Uh, yeah, I, I think they need to find a way to, to redirect him disrupt him get a guy who, who who pushes him hits him off the line of scrimmage and will help over the top. There he is way out there. He is changing things up on you. and look at all that field. He's all that field one on one. That's a problem. To Ross and he was held. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Franklin was holding him like a grudge and got caught with the flag. Yeah, he's running the post, and this is what you got to do. You can't cover him. Don't give up six. Take the penalty. Number. Okay. okay. I mean, Franklin has no Defense chance there. Number 18. Mm. Automatic first down. And th this is just a tough spot for Franklin to be in. You're asking him to play single coverage, uh, and he's he's got half the field. 
against a guy who already has three touchdowns and he's run by everybody. You could almost hear John Ross out there saying, hey, I got one. I got one out here. <laughs> three touchdowns already here in the first half for John Ross. Missed all the last season with an ACL injury to his knee. First and goal. That's still a matchup. Gaskin powering his way down inside the five. Tackled by Devontae Downs. A gain of five on the play. You know, and Art Kaufman, the defensive coordinator for Cal, is looking at this, and 83% in the red zone is a problem. And he'd like to double Ross down here, but Washington will just look at the numbers and run it inside mm. and run it down their throats. Second and goal. Gaston stepped real deep in the backfield. Made a nice read and cut down to the one yard line. Brought down by Cameron Walker. Rod, he was said almost looked like eight or nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. Well, plenty of room for him to see and use his vision to find the hole he wants. He can be patient. And for a guy who's not that big, he is a tough inside runner. I mean, he really does run with the, with a lot of toughness when you wouldn't think he could could do that given given he's only about 175 pounds. Third and goal. Browning into the end zone. Pettis with the touchdown. The Husky offense, a well-oiled machine. Uh, we said first to 40 might win this one. We might get 40 in the first half. And that's just a quick out. Pettis with mm. a well-thrown ball. And Browning is on, on the money, just mm. completely on the money. Browning, Ross, Pettis eviscerating that Cal secondary. Dante Pettis with the touchdown catch a moment ago. A much improved receiver from last season and showing off his wares with that catch. Great timing with he and Jake Browning. And Browning adding to that Heisman resume we were talking about earlier today in our uh, production meeting, Rod. Where, where do you think he figures in the whole Heisman hierarchy right now? Well, he fell off a little bit last week after the Utah game with a subpar performance. He needs a big night. Four touchdown passes tonight will probably keep him <laughs> in the running. Yeah, he's off to a good start. A lot of Jackson in that Heisman discussion right now. Yeah, Adnan Verk can tell you about that. Adnan, what's up? Well, Jonesy, I'll tell you all about the uh, BMW halftime report. Danny Canal, Joey Galloway, and me as Alabama sending a message once again to LSU with that staunch defensive effort in Baton Rouge. Also, CFB in three is Lamar Jackson putting up the magnificent seven when it comes to touchdowns. And a and the number four team in the country, has tripped up. Also, Ohio State just embarrasses Nebraska. All that more coming up at the half, Jonesy. Hey, ask Joey if he's faster than Johnny Ross. <laughs> you might have was he? You yeah. might have met his match on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Joey could fly back in yeah. the day, but this John Ross. Ooh. Is Joey a 4-2 guy or 4-3? Low 4-3? Somewhere around there. This is Talfani Muhammad with a nice run. Picks up the first down and a Washington player shaken up on that 11-yard run. At the 39-yard line, looks like the area. Yeah, that's Keyshawn Bieria, who's an outstanding linebacker. You talk about a guy who's got great speed at that inside linebacking spot. You know, he and Victor, as a tandem, they really chase things down sideline to sideline, and he is, he's a tremendous player. They use him in pass coverage as well. Yeah, we watched a lot of film of this Washington defense on Friday, Rod, and uh, they really epitomize a lot of the the, the new wave kind of the hybrid guys that are in the game now that yeah. play different types of positions, right? Yeah, you're, you're talking about a guy who can rush the quarterback and can stop the run and, and can cover receivers 20 yards, 25 yards down the field when you talk about the area. He's, he's outstanding. 
First and ten for Davis Webb. A blitz coming by the Huskies. And nobody home on the other end of that pass. Hansen watched it sail ten yards past him. As we approach one minute to go here in the first half. And Cal looking for a play. Uh, any way to come up with something to to keep connected to Washington. They've got plenty of time, but they need to come up with a couple plays here. Underneath. Hudson breaking tackles. Washington unable to wrap him up until he makes it out to the 44. Third down coming up, and uh, Cal with two timeouts remaining. A gain of seven on that last play. Well, they're losing a lot of time here. With They've got two timeouts, and mm. I would have burned one there. Webb hands it off to Trey Watson. All that for a yard run, Rod. Yeah, they, they burned about 20, 25 seconds. And now they're looking at, like, you know, what the heck? Just let it go. Yeah. But I think had they burned a timeout and given themselves a chance to come up with a third down play, they still would have had one timeout in about 40 seconds. Well, Washington won here a couple of years ago in 2014, 31 to 7. And now with two seconds to go, Cal calls timeout. Fourth and two. And, uh, you know, we uh, go back a couple of years ago and even last year, Rod, uh, we've seen our share of Hail Marys at the end of games and at the end of first half. So <laughs> Thank don't you. sleep on the Pac-12 after dark, folks. 75 points. 50, well, we'll get to 75. We got 55 already. We, we were talking before the game about... You know, who gets to 40 first in this game? You heard the guys, if you follow game day this morning, Kirk and Desmond and others were talking about this being a one-possession game, and they expected Cal to, to fight this thing down to the end and be a lot of points scored, and we already have 55. Yeah. Well, Coach Dykes telling us yesterday that any time you get a chance to play against a number five team and get a win, it's a great opportunity. Little hook and ladder to Bug Rivera. And the play whistled dead at the 37-yard line. That's going to be the last play of the first half. Do I have to see those tight plays ever again? <laughs> Five lateral plays to end the half or end the game. I wasn't going to bring it up. Well, they just did it. I wasn't going to bring it up. <laughs> Bingo. Flashbacks for my partner, folks. Getting a little chippy out there. And a flag thrown at the 37 yard line. They're not going to make them come back and play another one, are they? Well, you've got a flag. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 79 on California. That penalty will be enforced on the second half kickoff. Oh, wow. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, well, that, that's going to give Washington receiving the kickoff an opportunity for really good field position. A puzzling end to the first half for Coach Dykes. Let's head to the studio for our BMW halftime report. Guys. After months of campaigning, November is finally here. Every week, every game, every vote counts. From around the nation, they hail, all promising to make the postseason great again. See who rocked the vote for the college football playoff. Welcome back. Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Welcome back, everyone. 35-20 in the break. Number five, Washington. New coming into this ball game that Texas A&M, number four in the college football playoff, had lost earlier today against Mississippi State. Mark Jones chopping it up with Rod Gilmore, Quinn Kessnick down to the field. Uh, Rod, when we take a look at what this prolific offense has done, number four in the country, 
they lived up to their billing in the first half as we take a look at our planning for success brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Yeah, it really becomes what happens in the second half. What do you need to do? Washington had big plays in the first half. A lot of John Ross. They can continue to do that. That's critical for them to show, you know, style points and a dominant performance. Defensively, they haven't gotten to Webb. They haven't knocked him around a lot. Just one sack, two hits. If they don't get to him, Webb has a chance to get some big plays of his own. And for Cal, it is all about John Ross. You got to contain John Ross and you got to steal some possession. You got to get a turnover. You got to get something in special teams. You've got to find some way to stay connected so you're only one possession down in the fourth quarter. Because of the personal foul at the end of the first half, they kicked off from much further back than they normally would. Ross on the kickoff return out to the 28 yard line. Let's go down to Quint. In terms of defending John Ross well we've got to do a better job obviously not giving up big plays I mean the two big plays have hurt us um, we got some good matchups and they took advantage of them. we just got to do a better job of covering and get him on the ground when he makes a play thanks coach All right, thank you. Well, John Ross with those three touchdowns easier said than done <laughs> cover him and get him on the ground nine targets tonight a buck 64 and three TDs and, and he's feeling it I mean, he, he's feeling it when he's out there. Jake Browning with a much better first half than he had last week in that win on the road at Utah. Sophomore quarterback last year was the first freshman to start, true freshman to start, at Washington in the first game. Well, Browning's first half, four touchdown passes. Mr. Ross shows up for the first one and also... The second one just blowing by the Cal secondary, showing a little bit of everything, and then crouching down to get that third TD catch. And then Mr. Pettis fit, finishes off that first half. But four touchdown passes, just one shy of UW record for Browning. Browning with a lot of promise. Second down and 10. Drops it in, complete to Pettis at the 44 yard line two things stand out about Browning from field level uh, his accuracy whether it's the deep ball intermediate or shallow routes and then his completion percentage when given a clean pocket is just outstanding when he when he can use his eyes to move the defense set his feet and let it rip uh, he is as good as any in the country well Kiwa I, I think he just processes information quickly and he knows where to go with the football Almost like he has a bit of a photographic memory about what he sees. Pettis with the catch. You know, I had a chance to speak with George Whitfield uh, on the payroll with us at ESPN mm -hmm. and uh, quarterback guru coach, and that he, he is. He really likes uh, Browning, and said if you if you're really starting to nitpick a little bit about him, and it's something he really can't help right now. Browning is uh, just a little bit of strength, and it, as a, just a sophomore. He's going to grow into his body a little bit more yeah. and, and, and get stronger. Well, that, that was what a lot of people were concerned about in recruiting. Not quite big enough. But he certainly is uh, good enough. Gaskin right up the middle. A yawning hole. And near field goal range. Miles Gaskin approaching 1,000 yards on the season. Limps off the field here. Just that inside rushing attack using their tight end coming across the formation. And we really haven't talked that much about that offensive line and, and particularly the guys inside. They they really are doing a number on Cal's defensive front. Ross on the reverse. Got to the corner. John Ross brought down at the 15 yard line. He got a nice block from Jake Browning, the quarterback, and it would have resulted in a loss had he not gotten this block. Yeah, right? watch him peel back and free Ross. And he gets the head in front, so it's not a block in the back. Well done. And then Ross just uses his speed to outrun what would have been the contained man, Luke Rubens, are out there. Tough quarterback. Maybe he's a little stronger <laughs> than we think. Yeah. Stuck his hat in there. Yeah. First down and 10. 18 yard game. Browning surveys. Pettis touchdown. 
Oh, they are eating tonight. Oh, that is, that is too easy. That is Pettis running a little delay and Cal turning their back on him. Now watch Pettis on the right side. He'll show up there, number eight, just a little stutter step delay, and they pass him off to nobody. Wow. And Browning saw mm. that right from the beginning. He saw how far away Rubenzer, the, the safety was, and the space in there, and delivered it right on time. That's the fifth touchdown pass of the night. Ties a school record. Dante Pettis, the second one of the night. Ten on the season. Is Washington going to make a move in the college football playoff? Welcome back to Dr. Pepper's Championship Drive Game of the Week here in Berkeley, California. And right now, number 42 to 20. Starting to look a little bit more dominant, wouldn't you say? I'm thinking that the committee has a really tough decision. Tough it comes to Ohio State. Who gets number four after that AM loss? Well, yeah, well, you can get rid of that one right there. And then the question becomes what happens on Tuesday? Who moves into that spot? Alabama, Clemson, Michigan all played well and won. I think a risk for Ohio for Washington is Ohio State. I mean, if you think about what the committee said last week about schedule, challenging yourself. A one-loss team in a &M. Ohio State is just, is just the same. Right. Webb incomplete intended for Hanson. Working against Jones. Ohio State's resume would look stronger to the committee, in my view. You know, maybe, maybe stronger than the A&M. Look at these wins. Three wins over ranked teams. Look at the strength of schedule. 43. And they're a one-loss team. Um, I, I think Washington might be disappointed on Tuesday. Still be sitting at five. That'd be interesting. Pass incomplete. If Washington runs the table, ends up being a conference champion, and still doesn't get Look, into the right. top four, Th right? This is all interim stuff. In the long run, Washington controls its destiny. If they go undefeated and win the Pac-12, they will be in the playoffs. If they're a one-loss team, I think they still have a shot if they're the Pac-12 team. Mm. I think they'll still get in. Meanwhile, Cal, one of nine on third down, make it one of ten. That meek pass coming up short of its target. Robertson, good pressure from Elijah Qualls, number 11 here. Yeah, we talked about Washington's need to get pressure, get hits on Webb. There you see Qualls, the big fellow who is as athletic a 300-plus pounder as you'll find. Rod, we're watching him in film. He doesn't have the Lee Haney, Mr. Universe body, <laughs> body type, that, that V-shaped torso, then, then he but is, he can ball. He is the best bad body football <laughs> player in the country then. <laughs> <laughs> and we're saying that from three stories up here. Fourth down and 10. A quick three and out for Cal. And a flag. Pick him back. They only used up 18 seconds on that drive. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Mains fourth down. Yes. Well, Cal's hanging by a thread right now. I mean, they need to find a way to steal a possession and get on the board. And so you, you need to start looking in, in your bag of tricks. How can you do it? Maybe not here with the fake punt, but what can you do defensively? What can you do on a punt return? But you've got to create something because you can't slow down this offense for West Washington. Pettis back deep. A long spiral. Pettis with an opportunity at the 22. Gets to the perimeter. No flags down. Pettis brought down. The ball came loose. He got ripped, and it's going to be Cal Ball. There's the turnover you were alluding to, Rod. Uh, that's, Robertson. That's stealing a possession. 
Literally. That is exactly what we we're talking about, about needing a way to Coming steal the a possession the to give yourself a chance Recovered to get back the in the game. Watch down. his hit. That's McMorris, the big 300-pounder, the fullback tight end. He knocks the ball out of Pettis' arms, and Cal now has a chance to, to have a short field and get, get, a, get a possession, get a score, get right back in it. First turnover, turnover tonight for the Huskies. They lead the nation in turnover margin. Pass complete. That's Chad Hansen with a first down. Inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. Hansen, if you're just joining us, the team's leading receiver, one of the top receivers in the country and in the conference, playing on a bad ankle. Webb, in trouble, got rid of it incomplete. Bug Rivera was the closest receiver. It'll be second down and 10. Qualls there with more pressure. Yeah, that, that's the pressure we talked about. You know, Qualls, Gaines, and Vea. I mean, they get penetration. They really help make this defense go. And, and they haven't gotten enough sacks tonight. Washington relies on them. They don't like the blitz. They like to turn those guys loose. Boy, there have been a lot of flags Ball in start. this game. Offense, number 26, five-yard penalty, main second down. I'm going to back it up. Quint? Rod, you mentioned about the lack of a quarterback pressure from Washington's defense. Joe Mathis, once again, not playing in this game. Uh, his return, we don't know when he's coming back. And then Saul Mooching uh, has not been in this ball game since the second quarter. He's done for the day. He's on the sideline, still in his gear, no shoulder pads, but he has put ice on him. Undisclosed injury. And off. That's Trey Watson. And Watson gets drilled at the 25-yard line, gain of seven on the play. That's a good catch by Q. Those uh, two guys that he mentioned, Mathis and Wuching, you see Wuching there, th those are the guys that bring the pressure from the outside. And Mathis has been banged up for a while. He's He was their sack leader with five. They need outside pressure. Right now, they're depending on the big fellows to generate the pressure. Webb going up top into the end zone, and he's picked off by Jones. He went Jones's neighborhood one time too many. And why is the official keeping Jones away from the ball? Well, that was a bad throw, poor decision by Webb. You, you got to know where you're going with the football and who's open, who's not. I mean, that's Jones. He is the guy that they've tried to stay away from. He's the guy that most teams have tried to stay away from. And look where that ball is thrown. That ball is a fade route. It's got to be back towards the end zone, toward the basket to drop it in. It has to be over his head. It can't be inside. You can't leave it there. And Rod, that was the uh, second interception of the season for Jones. Well, and it takes away a scoring opportunity for Cal. You know, you, uh, you said earlier tonight that those two DBs Jones and King might be the best pair of cornerbacks in the country. Showing some skill on that one. First and ten, Huskies. Coleman in the backfield. And it's Coleman on the handoff. They dash that defensive front, and Coleman stays on his feet, unremitting and unrelenting all the way into Cal territory. Rubens are finally with the tackle on the 33-yard game. I counted 17 yards after contact. This is poor tackling. This is hard running. Look how far he carried that Cal defense. Yeah, almost 20. Oh, man. Holman and Gaskin, a nice uh, tandem in that Washington backfield. Look at the rush yard differential tonight. Look how much room they're giving Ross out there. Ross split to the bottom of the screen. Browning going his way. He's got him. Caught at the 12. And he ran out of real estate, or else he would have had a touchdown. Uh, they gave him a lot of, look at that cushion. But you got to turn your hips and go. You know you can't run with him. He's been running by you all night. You just can't give him 10 yards. You got to turn and go, and he still ran by him. Had that ball been a little bit more inside, he's dancing in the end zone. What a night for Ross. Well, his surname is Ross the third. That three stands for the three touchdowns he has tonight. First and goal. And nowhere to go this time for Coleman. He 
and string it out well. It's going to be a little loss on the play. Con Ross came into the ball game with 38 catches, 11 touchdowns. Those 11 touchdowns were tied for the lead in the country. And that 83 percent in the red zone is excellent. Remember, you want to be over 70 percent. They're way over 70 percent. Browning under pressure this time. Incomplete and a flag thrown. Drew Sample was being defended by Hawkins. And there has been no relief tonight for that bare secondary. Well, this, this performance by Browning. Pass interference, defense number six. Ball be placed at the two yard lines. Automatic first down. Player down for Cal. Browning with his performance for four touchdown passes. I think that's going to keep him in that Heisman race. I, I am one of the voters mm -hmm. in, in the Heisman trophy. And, you know, November is when you really start paying attention right. to performances, and, and in particular in, in big games, how you play in those games. What about Lamar Jackson today? Well, that's just, <laughs> he's just ridiculous. Responsible for seven touchdowns today. And he is clearly... I'd say the lead dog for most voters. And and the way he's performing really hurts a guy like Browning because Browning's numbers won't get to the same level as Jackson's. 15 of 22, 319, 5 TDs. That's pretty darn good, but Jackson went for 17. Yeah. yeah. Responsible for. On the cross, Gaskin will score. Hit the turbo jets and it was over. And the Husky band is playing again. Well, the left side of that line chopped down a bunch of cow blockers and Gaskin said, hey, no one from the inside's got the speed to catch me on the edge. That's his eighth rushing touchdown of the season and the 22nd of his career. And it's a 49 to 20 lead for the Huskies. It's the Pac-12 after dark. Committee members, hope you're up and watching. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy, and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Go for two. And welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Geico. Number five, Washington Huskies leading Cal Bears 49 to 20 here in the third quarter. Mark Jones alongside Rod Gilmore. And Kessin down on the sidelines. Folks, it's the Pac-12 after dark back on the East Coast where it is almost 15 minutes after 1 a.m. Hope that those committee members located on the East Coast or up with a little cup of uh, hot, hot, hot chocolate or coffee or doing something watching as we look at Robertson ready to return this kick. He had that fumble recovery a moment ago. A very talented football player from Georgia both on and off the football field. And Robertson had a chance to show us some of his talents with Quint. How does art and, and football mesh? Um, well, in art, like like I said, if you make a mistake, you can kind of cover it up. Football is, when you make a mistake, um, it can cost you. And So there's no erasers in the football field? <laughs> no erasers. <laughs> Robertson, the second leading receiver on this team, and a great student off the field, Q. Yeah, Demetrius is a little bit of a different type of kid. He, he's really mature, smart. You know, he's a, he was a late commit, a May commit from, from uh, Georgia who decided to come out to Cal to play uh, an environmental design uh, major. You know, he wants to be an architect one day and he, he enjoys drawing. Uh, he, he was sketching a, a 
house as you see the completion. Webb finds a man over the middle. You know, at home, uh, his, his prized artwork is, is a self-portrait that you see on, on a wall uh, in his house. And, and he spends a lot of time just sketching uh, and letting his mind wander. You know, I, I think so many of these football players need an outlet, and, and he has found his. That's a great uh, skill to have, too. I'm sure it serves him well, and, uh, you know, it can be a, a real cathartic thing, Rod. You played, and people don't know that these players need an outlet, and this is... This is what Quint drew. Oh, yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is the I, end product. Yeah, he worked on that Quint. a long time. It took him about yeah. an hour. Well, actually, yeah. this is what Quint ended up trying. Q didn't want to put you on blast like that and lie to the people like that. Uh, this is a, uh, <laughs> a log cabin. It's an impressionist, uh, as you see, it what looks to be an interception. Another one tonight by Jones, Quint. And uh, they might want to draw that. Because he's uh, an artist in the secondary tonight. Uh, we, we've told you, be careful throwing towards number 26. Most folks have stayed away, and that was a late throw over the middle. You saw Webb trying to get the ball to Warden, and Jones had him completely covered and acted like the receiver and stepped in front. So that throw's got to be on time. Davis Webb uh, facing a couple of great corners tonight. Second pick of the night for Jones. About eight and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Washington starting to put some distance between themselves and Cal pounds with the catch and the run. The first down out to the 47 yard line. Vanderbilt with a nice stick and a 13 yard gain on the play. a flag on the play we'll see if it stands or not after the play was over personal foul number nine on the defense 15 yard penalty be added to the end of the run first down it's against James Looney so Jones you remember that when when Browning was in high school not too far away from here about 75 minutes an hour away near Sacramento he set the national record with 229 career touchdown passes in three years of high school. Wow. He played, played for Troy Taylor, who was a quarterback here at Cal, mm. and was on Cal's recruiting radar, but apparently not, not a favorite yeah. on the radar. Real inexact science, and he is certainly blossoming under the Huskies coaching staff. Tiptoes out of bounds at the 32. Five-yard gain on the play. Well, remember, Davis Webb transferred in after Jared Goff went pro. Browning would have fit perfectly into the Cal system as a guy who would be ready right now as a sophomore, as a junior, but instead he kind of fell in love with Chris Peterson, who was at Boise State when they, when they met. And when Peterson went to Washington, Browning followed him. Uh, he had attended uh, Peterson's camps at Boise State. Second and five. Browning going up for Pettis. Room service. Touchdown, Huskies. And the route is on in earnest. This isn't even seven on seven practice. This is so easy. Pettis is open by four yards. And Browning recognized right away where he wanted to go with the football. Mm. Browning with his sixth touchdown pass of the night. That's a school record. And the 34th touchdown pass of the season. And the meter is still running, folks, and it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. Style points. We got committee members watching Jake Browning, watching this Husky team. How dare you rank them number five? <laughs> There's another touchdown pass, huh? 56 points already for the Huskies. Tell them the country about the dogs. Welcome back, everyone, to Memorial Stadium in Berkeley, California. Pettis with his second touchdown reception a moment ago. Son of Gary Pettis, former Major League Baseball player, and Browning with a school record six touchdown pass. 
And the Huskies leading by 36. <laughs> Don't think we aren't in the era of style points. Another short kickoff comes down to the 25 to Matt Larris. Well, our week nine Monday night football matchup features Tyrod Taylor and the Bills facing Russell Wilson and the Seahawks from CenturyLink in Seattle. 8.15 Eastern on the ESPN coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Style points, 56 here. Did you see what Ohio State did to Nebraska? What, what was the final? How, how, how bad did it get? I, I think it was the worst loss by a top 10 team or so. Ooh. Ooh. This is Watson on the run. I misspoke a moment ago. That was Pettis' third touchdown catch of the night. Ohio State, 62, Nebraska, 3. You know, I don't have a problem with coaches, quote-unquote, running the score up. Yeah. I, I remember my freshman year playing ball. I you ran get, it up. Didn't get a lot of run. I wanted to score when I was in. Uh -huh. I practiced hard all week. I should get a chance to play hard and score, too, not just go out there and lay down for somebody that's not as good. Trey Watson on the run. People shouldn't play sports if they don't want to get their feelings hurt. I've yeah, it's felt the other that team's way. responsibility to stop them, huh? Thank you. I, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. There, there is a point where the sportsmanship, I think, comes in. I mean, like if you're playing a football game and you're up 62 to 3 in the fourth quarter and you're throwing the football, you shouldn't be throwing it. You should Why? be running it. Oh, okay. But what if you're, yeah. what if you're a receiver? Isn't that unfair? No. Make yourself a first or second string player and play when the game matters. <laughs> Come on, man. Third and five. That's a good one, though. We'll take that one up later after the game. Jones <laughs> tipped that one out of bounds, and Davis Webb is having a real hard night. Yeah, uh, yeah, and a lot of quarterbacks have when they face this defense. And, you know, at one point, I, I heard people talking about this defense perhaps being as good as the Huskies' 1991 defense. Mm. I wouldn't go that far. This team could very well wind up undefeated for the Huskies, but that 91 team was ridiculous. Co-national champs, 12-0, beat Michigan and Desmond Howard in the Rose Bowl. It was Steve Enten here, right? Yeah. A low line drive punt. Pettis watches it bounce inside the 10, and the Bears is going to do a good job here keeping it out of the end zone. And they're going to down it at the one-yard line. So a nice job on the 59-yard punt. We were alluding to the championship, co-national championship year of 1991, defeating our guy Dez in the Rose Bowl. Boy, holding seven opponents to seven points or fewer is yeah. quite a feat. Well, they had Steve Entman, who was the player of the year in the Pac-12, and Mario Bailey was the offensive player of the year mm. in the Pac-12. 11 players were drafted including our buddy Ed Cunningham who works for ESPN and was on that team they were ridiculous their defense held teams to an average of nine and a half points a game and the 461 points that they scored were the most in the modern era of UW football yeah 11 draft picks Entman was number one overall they had Dana Hall and DeMarco Farr and you know, who else can I remember? They had a bunch of guys. And yeah, the quarterback, had too. Ballers. Mark Brunell was sharing time yeah. with Billy Joe Hober Hobart. You, Doug, you, you know better than I do, Rod, has always had a, a great recruiting pipeline into California, correct? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, you know, we've been talking about Browning, and, you know, he's a guy in the Bay Area that Washington came down and stole. Gaskin. Gain of about three on the play with... Five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. And the Huskies with their designs on moving up into the top four in the college football playoff. You'll find out on Tuesday night as they reveal again on ESPN for the second week. I think the committee is impacted by style points. You know, we saw that when Ohio State had that big championship win um, in their uh, Big Ten championship mm -hmm. game. And... You look at now and 56 here tonight. Ohio State went for 62. I think that matters. Browning complete. Actually incomplete to Ross. He gets spoiled by his uh, transcendence tonight. He dropped one. He's human. <laughs> yeah, he's had a night. 
So are you telling me that uh, style points is that a oh, euphemism you, for well, is it a euphemism for running the score up? It is running it up. Let, let me ask you this. You think it's a coincidence that the rankings came out last week and this is the first weekend of games? You had Ohio State with over 60. You had Michigan at 59. Mm. You had Ohio State, you know, uh, up there. Washington yeah. is pushing 60. Coincidence? I'm all for it. <laughs> I'm all for it. Now the return from midfield. Wharton. A lot of speed on that Washington roster. Tough to go east-west against those guys. They make the tackle on Wharton. When we talk about the rankings coming out next Tuesday, there's one team that we've left out as a possible threat to everyone above them. Auburn. Mm. A two-loss team that now, because AM lost, they control their own destiny. They get Alabama at the end of the year. If Auburn wins out, they could win wow. the SEC with two losses, and you're never going to keep an SEC champ out. Well, they got to make it in. That pass complete. That's an interesting scenario you bring up. Auburn has gone on a nice winning streak. We saw them earlier this year in person against LSU in a game where there was chatter that Gus Malzahn might have been in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. And they've since really turned their season around. Second and one. Muhammad tackled at the 23. Well, he made a lot of that on his own. I mean, that was a good move by Muhammad to get to the outside. That run was designed to go inside. He bounced it and picked up the first down. But I, I think you're right. You talk about, I'm not saying Auburn's going to beat Alabama, but theoretically, if they did and they finished 10 and 11 and 2. Interesting. An SEC interesting team. scenario, yeah. Tackle made by Greg Gaines that time on Alfani. Can you imagine if Auburn, with two losses, won the SEC and the committee left them out? The South was, would secede they from really the country. <laughs> I, I, seriously. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Can you imagine that? Yeah, we'd, we'd have something bigger than uh, potential election night issues. <laughs> I mean, that'd be a real problem. <laughs> Second and ten. Doug Rivera on the jet sweep with nowhere to go. Oh, like I said, it's tough to go east-west against these guys. Brought down by Connor O'Brien, number what, 29. What a smart play by Rivera. This was supposed to be a reverse, and he was supposed to give this football up. Watch him. He recognizes that King is there and disrupts the play, and he never gives that football up. Look at this. King is right there, so he hangs oh. on to it. That's a smart play. He was ready to take it away on the handoff. Third and 12. This Washington defense holding the second best offense in the Pac-12 to just 20 points so far. Webb incomplete intended for Robertson. And to draw up a touchdown catch. The artist slash wide receiver. A little bit of mutual combat, a little hand fighting between the two of them, not pass interference. That's allowed. They couldn't quite come up with it. Had a chance. Yeah, fourth down, they're going to go for it. No surprise here. About two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Red picked off for the third time tonight. They're curving. And knocked out of bounds at the 37. So Jones has two interceptions. Where Kervin with his first. Well, he was just sitting there as Washington dropped eight into coverage. And Webb never bothered to really look. I mean, look at this. There, there are a bunch of white shirts. They dropped eight. And he just never, ever looked over there and figured out that where Kervin was there. Burkirvin just sitting in the middle of the field and said, hey, look what came my way. Thank you. And it'll be first and ten for the Huskies from their own 37. Team that's seventh in the nation in scoring defense.
run it to McClatcher. Brought down right near the line of scrimmage. Well, Jonesy, we, we talked about big plays, and the Huskies have seven passes, seven passes over 30 yards tonight. Mm. Now, Ross has done a lot of that, but Pettis and others have stepped in, but that man's been responsible for delivering the football. He is 17 of 25, 364, and six touchdowns. And we have him in the fourth quarter. <laughs> in the Heisman conversation. Yeah, you know the crowning means business. He uh, hasn't posted anything on his Twitter or social media since the start of football season. He has gone dark on the social media front. Gaskin runs it. Well, the problem, yards. problem with his Heisman campaign is that, one, he's in the West. Mm -hmm. And as you've mentioned a couple times tonight, there are folks on the East Coast who are falling back. Yeah, it's 132 on the East ready Coast. ready to change their clocks. And as Christian McCaffrey found out last year, for Stanford, a lot of folks on the East Coast don't see your great performances. And then his other problem is Lamar Jackson. That's a big problem. Yeah. Seven touchdowns today, responsible for seven. Third and seven here for Washington. Pettis was wide open, and there's going to be a flag thrown. The DB making contact with him. That was Travion Beck. It wasn't just contact, it was. I'm going to grab you and take the penalty <laughs> instead of giving up another touchdown pass. Yeah, it looked like uh, they had him beaten on the out and up. Prior to the pass, holding defense number 22, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. And Beck was forced into a bit of action tonight when Allensworth was scratched just prior to the game. Take a look at the bottom of the screen. You see the matchup with Pettis and Pettis stutter step. Double move. Goodbye. That's why you grab. Otherwise, that's six. It's good when we're taken, right? Yeah. You don't want the band to keep playing, right? <laughs> Getting to know that song by heart right now. First and ten. Sweep into the boundary, McClatcher. Cut down with 44 seconds to go in the third quarter. Now, we, we've been talking about the Huskies in there, ranking in the college football playoff. Don't forget, there is still a Pac-12 race. Yes. Yes, there sure is. And, uh, Huskies are alive and well, but so are the Cougars. Hey, what about Colorado being uh, yeah. maybe, maybe the surprise of the year in the conference? Absolutely. Up? Second and six. Browning completes it to Ross. Ross, uh, man, he's been saucing all over that secondary all night. Four seconds to go in the third quarter. Has three touchdowns tonight, six catches for 208 yards. That's the end of the third quarter. Huskies got a lot of bite in their bark tonight. Back after this. Welcome back, everybody, to Dr. Pepper's Championship Drive Game of the Week. Mark Jones, Rod Gilmore, Quinn Kesnick down on the field. The Huskies clinical and surgical in their execution today after three quarters. And Browning pulling the trigger out of the backfield to Gaston. Completes it and gains about six on the play. Four weeks to go. And folks remember November, and uh, this is going to be an interesting race in the Pac-12, especially in the, uh, the uh, North Division with uh, Colorado doing well. The, how, how do you see things shaping up? Rob? Well, I, I think in the North, I think it's pretty clear it's going to be Washington State and Washington, and then in the South, SC is coming up, but Colorado was surprised. Second and four, Browning going to take a shot, trying to ring up the pass register again, 
and a flag thrown. It was intended for McClatcher. Well, at some point, the I'll take the pass interference call becomes an unacceptable way of playing defense, but that's got to be the third or fourth one tonight for Cal. No attempt to make plays. Pass interference. Look. Defense number 23. They're, they're Automatic first down. Right There's just that no is. other way to look at yeah. it, but these wide receivers are, are crushing Cal's secondary, and these are guys who are gamely trying to do their best Cal has lost a number of players. As I mentioned earlier, they lost one of their starting corners, Darius Allensworth, just before the ball game. And, you know, all these guys are struggling against elite receivers. Yeah, John Ross, one of them right there. Three touchdowns tonight. Pettis with three. From the 17. Taking another shot. Incomplete, and I'm not sure that you should be waving your finger if you're Malik Psalms. After, <laughs> after you just got called on a pass interference on the previous play. But you know what? At least he, the young man's got his confidence still. It was intended for Aaron Fuller. <laughs> Saying not this time. Yeah, the song says, my quarterback's already thrown six, dude. I'm coming back out here. <laughs> it's one of those, uh, did, did you see the score? Got a wildcat formation, direct snap to Gaskin. And pushed out of bounds. Washington and Washington State both at eight, pardon me, five and oh. In the conference, and uh, look at the Pac-12 North. Washington State 6-0 now with the win today. Yeah, and the Huskies will get there, and if things continue like this, that Apple Cup will be pretty mm. amazing. That game played in Pullman this year, and right? We saw Washington State a couple times earlier, and in week two, they looked like they were heading towards a three or four win season. Not anymore. Browning going to try and take off and tackled at the 19 yard line. So fourth down coming up. Good stop by Evan Weaver. A loss of two. And in comes a, a guy that uh, hasn't seen a lot of action tonight. Cameron Van Winkle. It's like the uh, Maytag repairman. He didn't get called off. Him. Uh, first field goal attempt coming from 36 yards out. 7 of 10 on the season. And Winkle knocks it through. Haven't seen him much. Not always there when you call, but always on time. Back after this. And welcome back, everyone. Jake Browning with a stellar stat line tonight. Six touchdowns. Let's go down to Quinn. A uh, monster night by the sophomore quarterback who really has avoided the bad play all evening. But you think about the standards of excellence with Chris Peterson coaching every play regardless of the score. That's really the first time all night that coach and quarterback had any kind of discussion of the negative taking that sack on third down. Uh, yeah, you, you saw Peterson unhappy as you see the return. The Cal's got a chance to make something happen. But uh, easy on the return. Chris Peterson yelling a little bit as much as Chris Peterson would yell. Come on, man. At his quarterback. Come on, man. Disappointed with the, the Come on, last man. series out there. 59-20, coach. No, he, he's intense. Look, they he's got a sophomore quarterback. He continuously coaches them. They have USC next week. And it's November. You're in the middle of what could be a championship right. run for the Huskies. I think maybe the issue becomes soon, Rod. Uh, when do you sit him now uh, and protect him and keep him out of harm's way as Patrick Laird runs that one up the middle, picks up four yards. I mean, they're up 39 points, and that's your number one quarterback. You don't want him limping around like Moore is out here for Cal. Well, if you're paying attention to the Heisman race, then you know that Lamar Jackson had seven touchdowns today a phenomenal day you might give them a couple more series <laughs> so you think the washington coaches and peterson and browning are aware of what lamar did today 
They watch. They watch game day, right? They watch our highlight shows. There's Laird again, running it down to the 42-yard line. Laird now in for Watson and Muhammad, and uh, injured player, and a flag down on the field as well. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul, number 15 on the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So it looks like that's McCary who's down. And uh, no, it's two. not. Uh, 79, there he is. Oh, yeah. Got rolled up on Patrick McCary. Yeah, it was his right leg. Good to see him walking off mm -hmm. the field now. A little assistance. Number nine on the defense. Looks like they just changed the penalty to Brandon Beaver. Number nine. It wasn't number 15. It was Brandon Beaver. There he is, number nine for the Huskies. So maybe another teaching moment for Coach Peterson. And a chance for him to, or the staff, one of the staff members, to put a player on blast, leading by 39. Here's the screen to Laird, and Laird locked down after a gain of two on the play by Burkhaven, who Burkhaven had that interception several minutes ago under 12 minutes to go Washington in control and when you start talking about Cal Rod uh, you start thinking okay they got four wins division lead out of their reach and it becomes an argument of bull eligibility or not for the Bears that pass complete to Brandon Singleton they still have a shot in the way they can score offensively uh, they still have a chance to, to get there. They have Washington State next week, and they finish with Stanford and UCLA. And Stanford and UCLA have both struggled to score. And so if you're looking at those three games, you'd think the latter two would be their best chance of, of scoring enough to get a couple wins. Webb trying to make some lemonade here. Completes the pass at the 15-yard line to Warstel. You know, this was a season in which, coming into it, I think Sonny Dykes felt like he, he had a team that could get to the postseason. And then after they got wiped out on the defensive side with uh, a number of injuries on, on the back end at the safety spot in the corner, I think he started getting concerned that getting to the postseason might be a challenge. Second and seven. Laird again. Patrick Laird got to the edge. Is tackled right around the 10 yard line, pardon me, the five yard line by and the defense still in heavy pursuit, an eight yard gain on the play. That's blocked by Cochran out there. There's some good size on the interior of that Husky defense and gains and claws. Holding one of the top offenses in the conference to just 20 points. Webb goes into the end zone and almost picked off again. Aaron Gardenhire was there. Yeah, and Gardenhire was in the right spot. I mean, he looked like the receiver on this one. Watch him run this route. He's in position to come up with it, but can't hang on to it. Not the best throws by Webb here in the second half. He's forced some throws. He's had a couple picks. Yeah, Jake Spavito, do you? Offensive coordinator for Cal told us he'd have to fit the ball into some tight windows tonight. This time he elects to hand it off to Laird, and Laird is going to get in for the touchdown. Oh, they're going to say he didn't get in. And now a, a late signal.
Now, this is a tough run. This is a hard run. Watch the way Laird finishes this, fighting to get in. He breaks the plane there. There's the football. That's clearly a touchdown. But yeah. he looked like he was stopped at around the three-yard line, but just kept churning and fighting to get in, and that's a nice little reward for the sophomore. Yeah, he's done a nice job with several carries on that scoring drive. And four carries, 23 yards, and... Now with the touchdown, back after this. One day, a rider made a decision. The decision to ride on and save money. He decided to save money by switching his motorcycle insurance to Geico. There's no shame in saving money. Ride on, ride proud. Geico Motorcycle. Great rates for great rides. We have forks, kind of like Chinese food restaurants have forks. You could use them, but people will see. Besides, you have two perfectly good utensils at the ends of your arms, ones that are evolutionarily tuned to handle nachos and wings. And if you ever do find yourself in some sort of salad situation, we've got chips. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by Lexus. And welcome back, everyone. Uh, the Bay Area, a glow at night. A look at the Bay Bridge there. And I, I, I'm not sure there's a lot of traffic on the bridge at this time of night. Of course, uh, my man Rod Gilmore has got all the shortcuts around the, the city. You can move here. Oh, I'm waiting to. <laughs> just figuring out that state income tax thing. You know. Uh, trust me, it's not the state income tax. It's the cost of living and the real estate prices. <laughs> That'll get you way before the income taxes. <laughs> to 27 and uh, Huskies have been in the high rent district in the Pac-12 this year perfect on the season coming in 8-0 and, and their quarterback Jake Browning a precocious sophomore doing a great job one of the few miscues tonight by the Huskies but they recover it Dotson did what a night by Browning though. Uh, he, he's been fantastic he has six touchdowns on the night found Ross for three of them a couple of them real deep one short and then he came back and started to share it with Pettis Pettis with a couple over the middle and one down the sideline six big scores and you know what that may not have been the most for the day <laughs> Lamar Jackson came up with seven, but six isn't bad, and that's the second time this year Browning has gone for six TDs in a ball game. The only quarterback in the FBS to do that, and he's got a well-deserved uh, break now. Uh, Carter Samuels in the ball game. Game card KJ Carter Samuels from Saratoga, California, the 6'2 sophomore. 219 pounds. Played some last year, sparingly. Take a look at uh, his numbers on the year. Nine and a half minutes to go, and uh, this 
one pretty much on ice for the Huskies. As they'll improve to 9 and 0 and 6 and 0 in conference play, and we'll wait until Tuesday. It was interesting that uh, Coach Peterson didn't seem too concerned about them being ranked number five in the college football playoff rankings that came out. Coleman with a spirited run into Cal territory, an 18-yard gain. Rod, what's it like? I mean, the coach says one thing, but do these 19 and 18 and 20-year-olds really shut it out as much as are you, he thinks? Are you kidding me? <laughs> they, I mean, they've got their phones. Yeah. They've got their friends. They have their family members. They're hearing about all this stuff. They're watching these shows, and they say, yeah, coach, right, coach, but then they leave the facility. Hmm. Their dorms, their apartments, they're hanging out. Of course they're talking about this stuff. They will be as interested Tuesday night as any fan out there as to whether they're sitting at number five or number four. I think they're going to be sitting at number five. You think they stay put, huh? Yeah, I do. This is uh, Coleman again. And Coleman is going to house it late in the game. Another Husky touchdown. Lavon Coleman, 49 yards. Ross on the sideline saying, now here's how it works. Oh, well, how it worked, <laughs> he just crushed them. I mean, he's their inside runner. He's the biggest running back that they have at 225 pounds, and he was working hard to get to the edge and get going there and got himself a touchdown. That's a nice 49-yard run. Style points, wow. buddy. Style points. 66 points on the board. For the Washington Huskies, 66 points. Those are offensive numbers that Husky basketball coach Lorenzo Romar would be proud of. Got a slam dunk for Washington tonight. Well, this college football season, streaming every game live on the ESPN app and on Watch ESPN. Download the app or visit watchespn.com today. Washington Huskies, another touchdown by LeVon Coleman, making it 66 to 27. And right now it's all about Tuesday. And the college football playoff rankings that will come out, revealed exclusively on ESPN Tuesday night. Trey Watson on the return. And uh, Rod, tell me what, what you think the committee will come up with Sure. On Tuesday. Yeah. I think what the committee will do since uh, they gave us a leaning is that they will move Ohio State into number four. And, and that's because they put A&M at four last week mm -hmm. and they cited the fact that they looked at non-conference schedule and wins against ranked teams and the like. And you can substitute Ohio State for A&M and get to the same place. Interesting. Prairie on the run now. People are going to counter and say, okay, Ohio State lost to an unranked Penn State team. How do you well, reconcile that? That's a Penn State team that the committee had at 12, you know, okay. this week. Okay. And, and you've got three wins against ranked teams. Uh, you've got one loss. Uh, you have a non-conference game against Oklahoma, which Washington can't match with their non-conference schedule. So I think the committee could do that. And folks shouldn't freak out in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> you really shouldn't. Easy for you to say. Query <laughs> again. Drop down. Look, look, Got the just, first down. If you're a Huskies fan, just relax. At the end of the day, if you're a Pac-12 champ and you're undefeated, you're in. If you're a Pac-12 champ and you have one loss and it's not in that championship game, obviously, I still think you're going to get in. I think you're going to get in over a one-loss non-conference champ. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. Trying to process that. McCrary won't, won't on the be run. Easy. No. Yeah, that, that's where I disagree with you, Rod. Mm -hmm. be, because that's where, again, you'll bring back the strength of schedule argument. Yep. And back into it, and they're going to be matched up against other one loss teams uh, or two loss teams, and, and they're out of conference strength of schedule. And, and even in, in the league, you know, Pac 12 wins across the country. Uh, where, where's the league RPI, basically, the league strength? going to be and so I, I think as a one loss champion they will probably get bypassed I, I hear you Q 
Here's, here's what I think. I, I think if you have, let's say, for example, a one-loss Michigan team that doesn't win the Big, uh, the Big Ten, is not in a championship game, and you have a Washington team with one loss that wins the Pac-12, I think politically it's a little difficult to tell the Pac-12 two years in a row that your champion mm. wasn't good enough, that a two-loss team couldn't get in last year and a one-loss team can't get in this year. Well, Michigan, I, Michigan beat up on Colorado early in the year, so we'll see how Colorado factors sure. into the Pac-12. No. It's a head-to-head -head that may come in handy. Webb incomplete yeah. at the 45-yard line. I, I, I think that's a good point, and that head-to-head -head matters, except that Washington will not have played Michigan, and probably, you know, they may not see Colorado. They might see USC twice. You never know. But I, I would say this. Um, the committee would be forced to deal with what they value more, a conference championship or your non-conference schedule. Yeah, and Louisville, Louisville's going to be floating out there potentially at the, at the end as well. Yeah, Louisville and uh, Clemson, though, out of the ACC, so. Yeah, as a non-conference yeah. champ. A lot of interesting nuggets to chew on. Sixty-six twenty-seven for the Huskies and the receivers certainly had big days, both Ross and Pettis. Who, who do you think had the better day? Ross? Who had the better day? Ross went for three touchdowns and a lot of them were deep. Pettis, three touchdowns. Pettis also threw one. Mm. I think that breaks the tie. Pettis, Pettis gets a choice, huh? Yeah. The immortal words of Ice Cube is a good day. Dotson with the run. You know, we were talking about whether Washington would get in with uh, with one loss to the playoff. You know, the best argument that Q didn't make? What's that? They'd be no different than Baylor, and Baylor didn't get in a couple years ago with a weak yeah. schedule and yeah. one loss. Yeah, their non-conference, Washington's non-conference schedule is very Baylorish in see, its appearance. See how generous I am? <laughs> I I'm giving Q the best argument to refute <laughs> my argument. <laughs> Uh, Q, there's your ammunition, man. <laughs> Second and three for Washington. No. We talked about the fact that uh, Washington will play Auburn in a couple of years, not next year. Quint? I'm more concerned on Tuesday about Western Michigan and where they stand ah. in, in relationship to the other group of fives. You got Coming a good look at them. 23 undefeated, uh, now 9-0, and and they're on the air after that uh, college football playoff selection show Tuesday night at, in Kent State. Well, they, got, they got a great wide receiver, too, by the way, Corey Davis. Uh, yeah. Senior, you know, I think Mel Kuyper's got him in the top three. You know, a guy like John Ross, uh, although he's a junior, would certainly be in shouting range to be a first or second round draft pick as well. Well, Q, I'd say right now that Western Michigan is in line to be that group of five champion that will play on New Year's Day, and they'll keep rowing that boat. Absolute driver's seat if, if they can win out. They've got non-conference wins over Northwestern and Illinois uh, out of the Big Ten. And they got a, you know, P.J. Flex got it going pretty good. I'd be shocked if he's coaching there next season. Really, really uh, quite an interesting coach to spend some time with. Hot candidate, huh? Oh, beyond hot. I mean, he, he, he's got... He's got a little Tony Robbins in him, but the kids buy into it, and he's been really successful. Obviously, they're undefeated. This is year three. Uh, I, I like what he talks about in terms of excellence, the kids being humble and playing with confidence. It, it, it really, he uses, you know, visual aids uh, and, and daily goal setting uh, really to perfection. Carter Samuels brought down and Stays in bounds with a nice run by him. And here's a look at the unbeatens remaining and how they did. Yeah, we're down to just five of them. Alabama knocking off LSU. Clemson rolling. Look at look at the numbers. 54, 59, 52. 
Hey, we were talking 66 about 66 tonight. We we're talking about quarterbacks. What, what about what about Deshaun? About Deshaun Watson of uh, Clemson. What about him? He's not. He's not in the picture. No, he's in the picture. He's still in the Heisman uh, chase too. Okay. You know, but Jackson is kind of overshadowing everybody at this point. But you know, three Real touchdowns doesn't bad day. To seven. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we've come to in yeah. in week ten of college football. This is Dotson on the run, stopped up. Hey, what, one other point about the committee and. It's focus on your schedule, strength of schedule, and your non-conference schedule. I understand that Washington fans might be upset about it, but that focus is good for football and good for fans. I mean, look what Washington has done. Washington has now scheduled Auburn for 2018. How is that bad? Right. I mean, we want these games. We want better games. We would rather oh, yeah. see Washington play at Auburn instead of Portland State. That's the name of the game now, and uh, you know, your coaches and your athletic directors got to get together and, you know, beef that up to the point that you don't give the committee members an opportunity to say that, yeah, you're 8-0, and but you haven't played it, anybody. There's a yep. look at the schedule coming up. Well, they'll have trouble with the committee in 2017, but this year... With Auburn on the schedule and BYU, they'll be looking very nice if they're in the hunt for a playoff, and they will have a senior quarterback. And look, if I'm Chris Peterson and I take over Washington and I've got a young team, I probably don't schedule tough games early on. But I'm looking out going, when I've got a junior senior quarterback, I can mm -hmm. schedule a tough game with, you know, three or four recruiting classes, absolutely. But then you can't complain when you jump up and all of a sudden you're ahead of schedule. Right. Carter Samuels hands it off to Dotson again, who picks up the first down. Well, after we wrap it up here tonight, in just a moment, don't miss Sports Center at night. Bucci Man and Kevin Connors have Browning on with an interview, college football highlights, as well as the NFL, NBA and NHL, NFL news, and all else from a packed Saturday in sports, also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Washington now has done over 700 total yards of offense you like uh, Washington or USC next week in that Pac-12 showdown it's tough to go against the Huskies the way they got it rolling right now and Browning had another big day six touchdown passes Dotson needs about five John Ross three receiving touchdowns and Pettis three receiving touchdowns Gaskin had a good day rushing the football. I mean, it was an overall dominating performance, not to mention what they did on the defensive side of the ball. I got to tell you, I think this is one of the four best teams in the country. Now or at the end of the season? I think right now they're one of the four best teams in the country. I think at the end of the year, they will be in the top four if they win the Pac-12. Mm. I think right now, the interim steps, last week, next week, they may be sitting at five because of what the committee looks at. But I think I test, they're one of the top four. Dotson stopped up at the line of scrimmage. And Washington partner with their first 9-0 start since that magical season, 1991. And that's going to put a lid on this one. It is cooked, glazed, and sliced. 66-27, the Huskies win it. Browning with 34 touchdowns this season. Passing the football. His six today tied his career high. And Ross with six catches. He went for over 200 yards. Pettis went for 104, three touchdowns. It was purple rain from start to finish for Rod Gilmore, Quint Kesnick, I'm Mark Jones. Thanks for watching, folks. Sports Center starts in 15 seconds. Out of here. Hold on to something. Go beyond <laughs> on Blu-ray. Fire everything we've got. Star Trek Beyond. Own it on Blu-ray this Tuesday.